love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up. It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. All it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity. It's mind over everything. What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are back doing some live streaming, doing those things that we believe we know we're good at uh, doing technical things. I would like to believe I'm good at technical things. However, my PC crashed literally about eight minutes ago. So we're uh, <laughs> we're flying a little bit loosely on this one. We're going to hope everything is still set up. Everything is still okay. Uh, if the stream randomly ends for some reason, that's because my, uh, my PC just crashed on me. <laughs> So we'll know. But of course, it's live streaming. Nothing ever goes right when you're trying to do live streaming properly. How are we all doing, guys? There is already so many people in the chat, which is really nice to see. People are here already. That is great. Normally, when we start off, we start off to sort of zero and we sort of slowly build up. Mark C in the chat. How are you doing, Mark? Joshua as well. What is going on, guys? Exactly. What is going on? I feel like I need to upgrade my uh, the background of my stream instead of a bit. It's kind of different. When I do my uh, my normal videos and stuff, I'm standing up. I've, of course, got the, the posters and stuff up there. Uh, when I'm doing my stream, I've got a bit of a blank wall. I need to do something back here. <laughs> I need to get some stuff up. If I ever get to like 100,000 subscribers, that's where like a YouTube plaque can go. That's absolutely fine. But I need something to do with this back wall, I think. Something to make uh, make the streaming look a bit more interesting. But we've got uh, so many uh, fun things to go over today. We've had an awesome Six Nations. We've got some Rugby 22 on the go. Speaking of which, let me uh, let me click over on the uh, on the game. We can have a bit of background music while we're talking as well. Uh, we've got some uh, some big things coming out. We've had Freddie Stewart's red card got rescinded. Man, wow, looking forward to see what people have to say about that. We've got Rugby 24 has been announced. New rugby game coming out at the end of the year. Man, so much stuff to uh, to go over today. And of course, we'll be interspersing with uh, some games of rugby. Not really sure what we fancy doing in terms of the games of rugby. I did think we could just do a, uh, an actual Six Nations. But I kind of feel like as the team who won of Ireland, it'd be fun to do a Six Nations as Ireland. But <laughs> Ireland are quite highly rated in this game. I haven't played this game for a while too fast, so I could, I could suck 
so we might uh, maybe starting off with Ireland is probably a, a good way to actually start off. Uh, Rugby Island News says, "What's up? How are you doing, Rugby Island News?" There's so many, uh, so many people already in the chat. That's really nice to see. These streams are so much more fun uh, when you guys are getting involved. What do we all think of the Six Nations? Then did we all enjoy a what felt like it went on forever for me from a content creator standpoint? I was doing videos every day trying to bash them out. Uh, but what some fantastic weekends of rugby! Ireland getting a Grand Slam. We can't say a lot more. I didn't actually uh, do any uh, commentary around any of the under-20 stuff. I didn't even catch any of the games. Uh, but the under-20s, Ireland also got a Grand Slam. <laughs> so Ireland look to be winning the next Six Nations for what? Like the next five years, probably, until uh, some of those boys go out? I don't know. I don't know how uh, teams are going to compete because uh, Ireland are absolutely phenomenal at the minute. Um, I have been doing some uh, some other fun stuff, which, because the last time we were doing a stream, uh, we did have... Uh, for the first time ever. People actually started um, giving, like, donation stuff to the stream. Never expected that to be a thing. So, uh, I felt a little bit bad because people were giving donations. There is a little, like, notification that pops up to say you, you donated something, which is awesome. But I felt like giving uh, something back to you guys. So, I've had a little bit of a look uh, over the last 24 hours. So, it's been sporadic. <laughs> at some cool stuff. But now, um, there is a link in the description of uh, of this live stream. It's in the, the first line. You can now do text-to-speech which is really fun. So if you donate £2.50 or more, uh, you can write a message and it should do something like this. I'm going to hope this works as a test for the first time ever. Pops up. Hey, Mad Dragon, you're the best. Oh, man. Hey, I'm the best. I'm going to need to uh, up the, the, uh, the volume of that a bit. But I think that's cool. I think that's a really fun way to show back a bit of uh, appreciation for people actually wanting to donate to the stream. You can now have a message actually read out. Feels like I actually get to talk to people as opposed to me just uh, trying to read through the chat. But we've already got a few people there. Captain Lewis says, hi. How are you doing, Captain Lewis? Um, Irish fan, really happy. Yeah, Mark, I, uh, I expect so. Uh, an Irish double Grand Slam on St. Paddy's weekend. How many, uh, how many Guinnesses were you sinking? <laughs> over the course of that uh, that weekend as well. Um, oh, Captain Lewis, not happy with that. Italy's performance. I, see, it's been really weird. There's been so many uh, comments uh, in the videos talking about how Italy haven't improved. Italy have been terrible. I, I, I viewed it completely differently. I was quite impressed with, it, with Italy this year. Uh, they didn't get any wins because, you know, not many people expect them to get wins. But the actual points they were they were losing by is dramatically increased. I, uh, I was having a couple of chats with some people in the, in the comment section. Uh, like last year, like they they lost by like fifty points to Ireland. They got nilled by England, um, and they had quite a roller coaster year. They managed to beat Wales, beat Australia, lost to Georgia. Like they were sort of all over the place. This Six Nations, though, they've not had the results uh, back then. The actual points difference. Um, I, I I thought they were getting more consistent of being able to not concede more while also scoring a few more, which is nice to see. That is the 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 groundwork that needs to happen in order to uh, to keep going upwards. But a lot of people uh, really think that Georgia should be uh, taking Italy's place in the Six Nations. A lot of uh, stuff to uh, to talk about. Uh, Mark C, they say in the next years, Ireland's under-20 team is going to be unbelievable. That's uh, not really what I want to hear as a Wales <laughs> support. <laughs> but I have no doubt that's probably going to be the way it goes. Ireland look absolutely monstrous at the minute. Ireland France just sort of stand a bit head and shoulders, unfortunately, in the uh, in the Northern Hemisphere at the minute. I, I feel like teams are going to really struggle for a good while to compete against either of them. Um, can't wait for Ireland to get knocked out in the World Cup quarterfinal. Oh, big, big, uh, big trash talk going in there. I don't actually know who they'll play. I haven't actually gone through yet. What I did, the, the last World Cup that was on, I didn't have the channel. The channel didn't exist. And uh, in the last World Cup, I sat down and did how I thought every single game would go and how they would all uh, like move on, play each other, get through quarterfinals, semifinals and stuff. I was putting bets on like the finalist um, and I narrowed it down to it would be a Wales, South Africa, New Zealand, England semifinal. Um, and then I did some betting for different alterations of, of, of those teams playing each other in the final. And I got... Uh, Bang on. It was literally those four teams that went through. Um, so I might do one for this year's uh, World Cup, but I, it's much harder to call, right? New Zealand and France in Pool A, Ireland, South Africa and Scotland all in Pool B. Like, what a ridiculous sort of competition that's going to be getting out of the quarterfinals for those guys there. Uh, pool D is where you want to be. <laughs> There's a couple of very happy England supporters at the minute thinking, hey, you know what? I feel we could definitely beat Japan and uh, Argentina will give, it a, uh, will give it a good crack. Um... Blame it on the WC draw. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I'll say that. Uh, as a Wales supporter, I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I actually don't know where we'd end up. I was actually going to be another video I was going to do is at the end of the Six Nations was going to be how would the World Cup draw now look? Um, I actually don't know off the top of my head how it would have looked, but I assume Wales. Wales in ninth. 
who would have been ninth back when it was actually done. I don't know what what pool we'd be in. I imagine I imagine we're taken over from Italy or so, and I imagine we're in with France and New Zealand, and and I just don't watch the World Cup. <laughs> um, Great for my uh, your handicap, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. The handicap, Ben. I, I I did all right. I did all right over the Six Nations. I think I won about ninety quid in the end across the uh, across the whole of the uh, the Six Nations. I was really annoyed. I had one bet on um, for Ireland to win the Grand Slam, um, Scotland to finish higher than Wales, Italy to finish lowest, and Johnny Sexton to be uh, highest point scorer of the tournament. It was like a hundred to one. <laughs> it got ruined by Johnny Sexton because Thomas Ramos doesn't miss anything. <laughs> he, he took that away from me. I only put like a 10p bet on. I was like, ah, if it comes in, that'd be great. But it, I did what I was sort of expecting. But uh, yeah, Johnny Sexton not going to manage to uh, get as many points. Uh, oh my God, chat's absolutely flying through. Um, did you see the Irish players going to Ring Rose's parents' house for a drink? No, my God. That's got to be... <laughs> well, all of them. That's a lot of people to fit in uh, in one house. <laughs> Especially rugby players as well. I used to live with rugby players in university. They ain't tidy people, believe me. <laughs> um, Connor, does rugby's in the chat as well? Hi, Connor, how are you doing, man? Uh, in another universe, they beat uh, France and Scotland. Uh, I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great point, Connor. Connor does all sorts of fabulous things on uh, on his channel. I forgot what I was saying at that point. Uh, draw is a disgrace. Whoa, big big all there, yeah. I mean... I'm kind of happy. I'm kind of happy with uh, where Wales are at the minute. Although saying that, actually, am I happy with where Wales are? I don't know if they'll beat Australia. They've got a rough game against Fiji, and they lost to Georgia last year. The Wales get even out the uh, out the pools. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Um, you think George Ford should have played for for England? There was a lot of talk around the uh, the fly half shirt for for Marcus Smith uh, being in that in that number ten shirt. That one game they had against France where they just completely fell apart um really didn't go their way uh marcus smith got a lot of blame for that and i didn't really think that was uh, particularly uh nice towards him because <laughs> i feel like the, the rest of the team was struggling along with him uh, but i was impressed by owen farrell stepping up in the in the final game against ireland i thought he had a bit of improvement i look forward to see if george ford actually gets a look back in for the world cup um because i'm not really sure who else would be uh, getting a look in for the uh, for the number 10 shirt uh, Joshua says, uh, Pool D should be very competitive. Wales, Australia, Fiji, Georgia, and Portugal. Imagine if Wales lose to Portugal. Hey, I have no idea about the Portuguese rugby team. Are they good? They got it in the World Cup. They must be at least decent. <laughs> Sometimes they're the ones you, you never quite expect. Who is, um, it was Uruguay, wasn't it, last year? Or last year, last tournament that beat Fiji. Um, you know, no one saw that one coming. Sometimes, man, the, the lower-ranked teams. The problem is because Wales have actually got such a big a big pool to play against, you know. Southern Hemisphere teams, big team, Fiji, Australia, you know, injuries can come in. You've got to put on first teams for them. Portugal's like the only team you really want to be like, we could probably put a bit of a B team on for this one. But then you run the risk. You go to B team, Portugal, take uh, take the most of that uh, that opportunity to try and get a win in the uh, the Six Nations. Oh yeah, Pool C, of course, yeah. <laughs> I literally was just talking about Pool C, and then we moved on to uh, to Pool D. Uh, right, let's uh, let's head over to the uh, the old game. Let's get some game started because uh, oh, I mean that's just nothing. That's just a a blank screen. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? This is the joy of trying to do stuff right at the end. Yes, rugby. Why are you not rugby? There, see, look at that. Like a pro streamer. <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. Uh, right, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do a Six Nations. Do we want to do Ireland? I was going to do Ireland because they won, but I don't want it to be like... I don't want to win every game like 50-0. <laughs> That's a bit boring. Uh, who, 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 who who, got like an okay score? What about Scotland? Let's do Scotland. That'll be fun. Let's do a Scotland... Oh, that's a World Cup. Scotland. Scotland in the Six Nations. That could be fun, right? Third place... That's our target for uh, for this. We can see if we can get to uh, to third place. I have no idea. We can try and make the team. This was something I was doing. For anyone who watched the uh, the Mad Dragon Six Nations, this is what I was doing. I was trying to make the teams a little bit more represent the team that was actually playing um, in the Six Nations. So we can uh, we can have a quick uh, flick through and see who we want to replace. I mean, we uh, we got to switch around. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Tui Pilotu is in this game. Uh, I don't think he is, uh, but I do know that Hugh Jones is. So we'll check Hugh Jones um, on a 13, because, you know, big try scorer for Scotland. Got to uh, got to show that uh, the Scottish appreciation. Something that I'm really hoping for Rugby 24 that we get to see is when we're doing all this with the team management stuff, 
I really hope there's a way to just save this team, because uh, I can't really be bothered to change this every game. <laughs> but for the first game, uh, we'll, we'll mix it up. We'll have a, we'll have a, a bit of a better proper team on. Uh, Darcy Graham. Darcy Graham, unfortunately, didn't play across this uh, this tournament. I was really looking forward to seeing him. Uh, I know Kyle Stain is in this game somewhere. Do -do -do -do. There he is. Uh, Kinghorn, get him on the uh, on the bench as well. Man, they really need to. Oh man, I can't wait to have another new rugby game. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm one of the people that really enjoys playing with like an up to date squad. You know, how many of these names do we not see in the uh, in the Scotland team anymore? Uh, did Rory Sullivan get in? Don't remember. Check Rory Sullivan on. Ollie Kevill certainly didn't. Uh, well, that's what we're working with. <laughs> um, Portugal knocked out America, did they? Wow, I, uh, America. I didn't. Have to, I, yeah, I didn't see any of the uh, the tier two sort of well, tier three stuff is even at that point for Portugal, but tier two stuff certainly for for the USA. USA have had a bad run though recently, right? Like I remember them having. Um, they, they were the sort of team they would get into the World Cup quite often. Um, and then they started their own league. And then I watched them play in the summer internationals. And they just lost to everyone. Um, it certainly didn't go their way. So, hey, get Portugal a crack. Um, Green Gamer says Wales is going to make it to the semi-final. Massive call. Um, I mean, to be honest, out of, the, out of the sections of where the World Cup stands, being in uh, C or D is certainly where I would want to be. Um... Because, man, being in pool A and B is an absolute nightmare. Um, I still think I've got the uh, the commentary off from the game for when I was filming the uh, the uh, My Dragon Six Nations. So we won't have any commentary, but we'll let this build it while I uh, read through it. So nice to have so many people in chat. I love that people get involved with the uh, the chat. This streaming is as fun as uh, you guys uh, in the chat because it's so much more fun to read through and uh, respond to people. Uh, you won't get. Uh, any game started reading all these comment chats? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we got one going. I can read. I can read and play, right? Um, what mods am I running? I have no idea what the names of the mods are. Uh, I found this mod uh, through. He's a French uh, YouTuber called Alex Gaming. I think he's changed his YouTube handle now to just Alex. Um, I never like put links or anything in in chats or anything because I never want people to get sidetracked by like a bot adding in their own. <laughs> Link, I have like quite a firm thing. But you can look him up, Alice Gaming, um, is where I found it anyway. Um, it was, and you can get it on like, I think like the rugby forum pages and stuff, you can find mods and stuff. But it gives this game an actual Six Nations, it gives it an actual England team, which is nice, it just fleshes it out. Again, I'm really hoping Rugby 24, give us a Six Nations, give us uh, actual licensed teams. That's what we all want, right? <laughs> uh, let's see if we can uh, run back here. Who's back here? Oh, well, all right, Stuart Hogg, just get in the way. Why not? Come on, Duan van der Merwe. Starting out strong, straight through on the... Uh, who was that there? Oh, number nine. I thought it was the fly half. It was not damn bigger. Finn Russell pops it off. Grant Gilchrist not managing to... Uh, oh, well, and we've already lost. I think I've still got this on legendary difficulty. Uh, oh, that's how you get an interception on the go. I've been practicing. I've had my <laughs> my Six Nations tournament running alongside it. I've got used to this game. I have been playing so much recently of the uh, of the World Cup 2011 game. Since doing the uh, the big review video for Rugby 22 and uh, having to include some some footage and stuff from Rugby 2011, I have enjoyed playing that game so much more. I played it uh, two nights ago, and I did the World Cup. I actually did the World Cup with Scotland. I'm playing with Scotland again tonight. Um, but I did the World Cup with Scotland. Um, and just enjoyed every game of it. I really hope Rugby 24 lives up to uh, lives up to the hype of that game. Playing in the World Cup with a good team like Scotland and beating teams like Romania like 54 nil. Uh, oh wait, yeah, that's why I press Y <laughs> rather than B because it's Y to do a grubber kick in uh, in Rugby 2011. As Tom Francis on a little breakaway, outrunning Chris Harris. What's going on there? Tom Francis has got a little bit of a speed boost in this game. They go out to the wing. We'll tackle Josh Adams nicely on that wing. And a uh, nice little turnover. Let's not step into touch. Kyle Stain. Oh, nice little pass there. George Turner. Not going to be able to make it through. Let's spread it out wide here. Get out the way, Watson. Grankist. Oh, no, no, no. Take him down. Adam Beard got some speed. Is that foul it out? Get across. Good tackle, Stuart Hogg. Oh, my God. The Scottish defensive line is terrible. <laughs> What's going on, boys? It's fair, I haven't actually set my defensive line, have I? But get that clear. That's an awful kick. That's a terrible kick. Or is it the best kick ever? No. <laughs> Nearly an amazing uh, crossfield kick. Uh, Joshua Jones says, Scotland to win by 28-0. You've got a lot of confidence to me, Josh. Won't be happening. 
Legend difficulty is is actually tough to uh, to get quite a few uh, just a few scores on, but we will see how we can do. If we can get some bonus points as well, that would be nice, right? Cal Stain, oof that along. Two players chasing this down. Cal Stain will win that as well. No, he won't. Oh, what? How does he not win that from there? Had all the room. Wales again. I don't know what it is about this mod. I don't know if uh, if a lot of you guys watched the uh, the Mad Dragon Six Nations I was doing. The Wales defensive line in this mod seems to really struggle. I mean, kind of like real life, but like. They, they seem to really be all over the place, right? <laughs> Where is their, like, line set up? Look at this gap. They've got a pot of five. <laughs> Someone in the coaching staff needs to have a word with this. Yeah, we'll have a scrum. No, absolutely fine. Uh, what's everyone's opinion on Jamie George, says Captain Lewis. What about Jamie George? As in, just generally as a as a hooker? Um, I would say he's probably still the, the number one choice for... Uh, for hooker for England now. Um, I really wanted to see a bit more from Jack Walker. Um, I don't feel like I got to see en enough from him. I don't manage to catch a lot of the club level games and stuff, so I don't know how people perform at club level. International is my only real way to uh, to see the most of some of those players. Oh, Ali Price, get it away. Finn Russell. Um, so I wanted to see a little bit more from him uh, in this tournament to know quite where he is. Um, other people probably still wait. Luke, Luke Cowan Dickey. Is Luke Cowan Dickey out with an injury at the minute? Um, I don't remember seeing his name anywhere on the on the team sheet. I'm not that good at thinking on my feet. Anyone new to the, uh, <laughs> the the channel, if you don't know me at streaming, I'm not that great at just thinking on my feet. Uh, I try my best. I don't have facts and information on hand ready to go for about every player. Um, I do like Jamie George though. I mean, he did okay in the um, in the fantasy thing. He was he was one of the few players actually scoring quite well for the England team. Um, England do like going for their sort of uh, driving balls and gaining meters. That's probably where a good chunk of his meters came from. Is Kyle Stain? Oh, gets a little grubber kick along the way. Can we score that in the corner? No, we can't. Oh, and he dropped the ball. Kyle Stain, come on, man. Go oh, another scrub. Um, yeah, I think he's. I think he's good. I mean, he's he's been doing it better than uh, than Ken Owens has been doing in terms of the lineouts and stuff for for Jamie George. Who would you uh, Who would you pick over him as a hooker? That's, a, that's an interesting choice because there's a, there's a couple of names around. Would you still think he's the uh, the number one choice at hooker for England? Uh, 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 at this point, Wales fans should be happy finishing third and qualifying for the World Cup. <laughs> I think I think just winning games at the minute feels like a, a bit of a win. It was quite interesting to see so much of the uh, the talking points around the uh, the Wales Italy game. Uh, I saw loads of people on Twitter. You know, uh, Wales have bounced back. You know, here they are. What a great win over Italy! Absolutely superb. I was less convinced. Oh, Ali Price. Um, I thought they definitely got a bit lucky with a couple of them. That that bounce for the Rio Dio try, I thought that that probably doesn't happen in another game. Um, Liam Williams getting through five defenders. That's poor defense from, uh, from Italy. Uh, Italy had a try disallowed, which I absolutely think probably should have been a yellow card for, uh, for Owen Williams. <laughs> Um, as well, and they didn't beat Italy by that much. So at this point, uh, I'm just taking wins. I'll take wins for uh, for anything there. Um, anyone, uh, how's it doing, stamina wise? Everyone looking uh, relatively good. Uh, Come on, let's chuck, uh, let's chuck Blair Kinghorn on. He was playing very well in the uh, in the tournament. I actually saw him named in someone's team of the tournament at fly half, which I thought was uh, was that must be a hell of a. A confidence thing for him. People are going to start naming him as uh, as team of the tournament fly half, considering he only played one game there. A hat trick is enough uh, for some people to uh, to override everyone else. Let's see where Wales will go with this one. Oh no, that was the wrong player. Oh, what an open pass. Oh, didn't mean to do that. And we got a yellow card as well. Hamish Watson. Hamish Watson not not having the game today. Got in the way of my pass earlier on. Giving away a yellow card for a high tackle. Does anyone know if there is actually red cards in this game? Has anyone successfully got a, a red card in this game? I don't think I've ever seen one. <laughs> I just punched someone in the face, you know, in this game. How, how, how does that not count as a red card? All right, come on, Scotland. Our target is 28-0 from what Josh claimed earlier on. <laughs> We've got to try and get there. I don't know about winning to nil. I don't trust any of these teams to not just take a three points as soon as it opens up. Oh, that's a good that's a good defensive work though. And again, no, we can't get there. Oh, we've got to have numbers there though, right? Come on, boys, in we go all day long. Right. Run, run, run. Jamie Ritchie out wide. Kyle Stain. Who's out there with him? Someone chase back the ball. Put him under pressure. Good clearance to be fair. Right, Stuart Hogg. Let's do what Stuart Hogg does. Counter run. All the time. <laughs> 
the, the best thing Stuart Hogg can do. Some would say the only thing Stuart Hogg can do. Counter run, very hard. Oh, that's a good tackle in the midfield. Someone get there with him. Nope, doesn't work. Oh, good clearance. Fair play. He worked out of there well. Right, Stuart Hogg, get that back down. 50-22, incoming. Oh, nearly. Nearly managed to get that in the uh, in the corner. Um, you'd probably pick Dylan Hartley over Jamie George uh, if he came out of retirement. Uh, yeah, Dylan Hartley... I was going to say he retired, didn't he? <laughs> I've heard Dylan Hartley's name mentioned uh, for a little bit. But then saying that, Dan Cole's still going. So, hey, if you can uh, if you can come back as Dan Cole, why not? Uh, let's see if we can get a 50-22 the other way. That ball just does not want to go out. <laughs> right, come on. We need to get a try. I'm just messing about here. Going for kicks. Right, Skidder. Take it to the line. And a hands in the ruck. Right, that'll help us make some uh, some extra meters. Um, thoughts and predictions on the upcoming rugby championship. Uh, I'm actually going to see the Wallabies versus All Blacks game in Melbourne. Oh, awesome. That'll be a, a great game. Uh, the rugby championship last year was the first time I've ever been able to catch uh, the rugby championship, I think. Maybe I caught the one the year... I think I actually caught the one before, but it was called the Tri... The Tri-Nations, was it called? The, or the Tri-something, because South Africa had uh, different restrictions. Uh, or oh, due to uh, viruses and what have you. Let me get that out Why George Turner. Little offload to Kyle Stain. Here we go. Little drink around the outside. Who's injured? A Schooman. It's fine. Schooman can power on. Oh, Matt Ferguson hitting the gap for a beautiful try. Absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to catching it. I haven't caught any of the um, the club-level stuff from Southern Hemisphere teams recently, though, which is a shame. Like, normally I've been able to catch the Super Rugby Aotearoa when that was on, or I was able to catch some uh, some highlights from, from the other club-level games. So I have no idea where teams are at or where players play anymore. <laughs> so I look forward to a bunch of comments where I say things like, well, of course... This player playing at the Crusaders is great. And people say, no, no, he's moved to the Hurricanes now. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't keep up to it. I did hear that the, um, was it the Crusaders coach has now got the, the New Zealand job? Um, looking forward to uh, to see him in that role. He's a guy that uh, I remember seeing him do effectively break dancing, right? <laughs> we need more stuff like that in uh, in international rugby. Let me uh, take scoop it off. Oh, should we get on? Let's check out. Let's check on a bunch of. Uh, we need. We need two tries to to meet this twenty eight nil claim that was made in the uh, in the chat. What else we got here? I've got. Oh yeah, I've got three fly halves on my team. That's not great. <laughs> That's like the opposite to what we want. Uh, what else we got on the bench here? Uh, you got a flanker. Uh, let's take him off for Hamish Watson. He's not been doing great. Uh, Ewan Ashman. Let's get, a, let's get Ewan Ashman and uh, a hooker as well. There we go. Probably should have done this before the line-out, shouldn't I, really? But, hey -ho. Let's see if we can make the uh, the most of this opportunity. Let's try and go out wide quickly. Hugh Jones, big up and under. Here we go. Chase the ball down. Oh, no, didn't manage to get there. But we can get an... Oh, God, we got like a four-on-one overlap here. This is a try, right? Gilchrist. Harris. If he didn't score that, <laughs> we had so much room. <laughs> there was no way that didn't get over. Chris Harris is is much faster than he is in this game. That was outrageous. We had a four-on-one overlap, and they managed to cover that. Grant Gilchrist running a bit slow. Managed to get there. Managed to get the, uh, the stretch, and we got the substitutions right. So... We need this kick. In fact, we've got enough time to score one more. We might hit 28-0. We might be able to get there. Decent kick. Um, still a few months away, mind you, uh, but I'm also so excited. Yeah, well, the rugby that I got to watch for them, the uh, the rugby championship is great. It's it's very fun to watch. It's, it's not a forward pass ref. Have words. Uh, <laughs> the actual rugby quality was very high, and last year especially was was far more interesting because Argentina were really competing and being able to beat sides in games and look dangerous. Every team seemed to be winning whatever game they were playing at home. Uh, it was very, very high quality rugby. I actually really enjoyed watching... Um, when I got to watch the Super Rugby Arturo and actually catching some of the New Zealand club-level rugby, it was very nice to, to see the speed and intensity of, uh, of club-level rugby really looking good over there. There was a reason New Zealand were uh, such a good side, because their club-level is just 
monstrous in terms of uh, of how fast they play the game. The breakdown situation, no one waits around. Breakdowns are over so quickly. Oh, look at that for a pass. Oh, Rory Sutherland, though. The absolute magic man with the hands. Right, four minutes to get up the other end of the field. Let's make it work. Chris Harris, off look. What's going on with my centres today? Why is no one doing anything? Chris Harris can barely run. He can't pass. Hugh Jones is just throwing the ball forwards. Come on, boys. We need to improve. We need one more try. Scrummaging is still very hard in this game, though, on Legend difficulty. <laughs> that is probably one complaint I have about uh, about the Legend difficulty, is just how difficult things like this are. Right, come on. Get the ball. Get the ball. Okay. Got to go left. We've got the man overlap there. Go. Oh. And they turned that over, did they? Why is no one supporting my men? Get in there, boys. Good job. Right. Where? Oh, look how slow this line is. What are you all doing? Why have I got four men five meters from the wing? <laughs> right. Hodgson. Come on, boy. Get yourself up the field. We need to... Oh, look at the gap. Look at the gap here. Okay, good take. Well done, Chris Harris. I take it back. You're playing well. Out to Jamie Ritchie. Where's my winger? Keep it in, Kyle. Right, people need to stop passing forwards. <laughs> well, we didn't get to 28-0. 21-0. 21-0 is fine. That is still a, a decent opening game. I haven't played this game since the last time I did the, uh, the Mad Dragon Six Nations. Um... Joshua says, uh, I think I've only got a red card in Rugby 22 by getting two yellows. Yeah, even that, though, is difficult, right? I actually find it kind of hard to actively get yellow cards. I don't even quite know what I do. The closest I can work out is when you run to, like, tackle a player, if you push the analog stick in the opposite way to where you're meant to tackle, sometimes that ends up being a yellow card. Uh, but it is quite tricky to actually do. Um, does it say uh, what happened in the other games? Oh, this is fun. See, I love this. I love our isn't our modern communities great that they get to add stuff like this in. Uh, right. So what happened in the first round? Ireland thirty six thirteen to to Ireland. We won twenty one nil against Wales. France won twenty three sixteen versus England. England would have been very happy with a score like that at the end of uh, of their game in the Six Nations. Uh, they would have been happier with uh, the score in day uh, day two round two probably rather than day two, but we'll take it. Uh, Ireland losing eighteen to thirty eight to England and Wales beat France 21-9 Six Nations shaking up on uh, on the game I'm loving this um, Captain Lewis says uh, what's better Rugby 22 or Rugby Challenge 4 well I've only played Rugby 22 um, I saw gameplay from Rugby Challenge 4 I'm not a big fan of the like the camera rotation where you, you play behind the player and if the ball gets turned over I've never liked it um, and I think Rugby Challenge 4 is locked to that so I was never that into it Lack of licenses as well. Um, they only had the four. Yeah, England, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, they only had four international licenses as far as I'm aware as well. So I never picked it up. I was waiting for it to go on sale. Uh, but it's actually been pulled from uh, digital stores now. Because I think all their licenses have come to an end. So I'm guessing Rugby... Tw uh, yeah, Rugby 24. I was going to say the wrong name then. Rugby 24 has secured some licenses, maybe. And that's why you can't find it anymore. I've been waiting for it to be cheap on Steam for about a year. <laughs> and it never did, and now it's gone. So uh, so if you've got Rugby 20 uh, Challenge 4, I think you almost need like a physical copy now in order to actually play Rugby Challenge 4 unless you uh, you already had it. Uh, Carlos Rugby, is it a uh, truncated Rugby Championship this year like it was before the last World Cup? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you should watch uh, the Blues Crusaders highlights. Everyone says it was a great game and the tries were brilliant. Well, I saw the Crusaders lost two. I don't know their name. I think they're like a Fijian side. Um, was it in the opening round? Uh, and that really took me by surprise because from my my very small amount of knowledge in uh, in the like Southern Hemisphere club, the Crusaders are regarded as the best, right? They're or like the you know the number one team. They're like the the Leinster over here, right? So, um, I I watched the first Super Rugby Aotearoa. They just demolished that one. Um, I didn't be able to catch the games of the second one since I started watching it. Um, but I know they went on to play the final against the Chiefs, I want to say. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but I put a bet on the Crusaders to win the whole tournament from before that tournament began because they just looked so much better. Um, and then they lost that game in the opening round. I was like, oh man, maybe maybe, maybe there's some... I don't know what's happened though in terms of players moving. The last time I saw the Crusaders playing, you had Will Jordan, Severis, Richie Mwanga, uh Whitelock. You know, there was there was half the New Zealand team played for, played for the Crusaders, so... Maybe a lot of them have gone. Maybe it's all uh, shifted up a bit, and maybe that's maybe they're not quite as good. I haven't heard anything about the Blues Crusaders game. Is it? Is it? Do we know who won, <laughs> or is it just uh, just some really good highlights to go watch some uh, some good tries? Uh, Rugby Twenty Four has got to change the ability the, uh, to change the kits when playing in league or career mode. Yeah, the uh, the kits playing in the same kit is awful, and uh, it should be one of the first things you look at. Unfortunately, it was also a thing in Rugby Twenty which uh, is very annoying when there's clearly a flaw in the game, but uh, you just carry it over to the next game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm hoping Rugby 24, Big Ant Studios involved. Really looking forward to see uh, what, what their take on it can be, because I know they are they are a good, uh, good maker of some games. Um, the biggest issue with Super Rugby is we lost the South African clubs to the URC. I've still got a couple South African friends and they're really unhappy with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want good um, good tournament games, the uh, the South African team's coming over. Probably been good for the URC. Um, I've seen a, a couple of them. I did a couple of videos with um, the Rugby Guru. If you guys know him, he's a South African YouTuber, does rugby stuff. Um, he's big into his, his South African club level stuff. and he was, He's been very impressed, I think, at times with with how South African clubs have uh, performed. They believe they've done pretty well, right? Didn't they have... Was it an all-South African club um, final last year? Or the year before? <laughs> Mad Dragon, you're showing off your level of knowledge for uh, for club-level rugby at this point. All right, let's actually spread our defensive line this time. Right, we're against Italy. Score predictions? Score predictions for Scotland versus Italy. We attempted 28-0 last time. We didn't get there. What do people think for uh, for this one? Who says it's van der Merwe? Taking it already on the wing. Here we go. Once Van der Merwe gets on the ball in this game, it's just over. <laughs> Predictions, at least seven for Scotland. Um, uh, also, just uh, seems done to have the clubs be out of sync with the rest of the uh, the Southern Hemisphere nations. Yeah, I don't know. what What is the rule for, um, like, letting players go for, for international duty? It's one of the issues I know Wales has struggled with a lot, is players playing over in France or playing in England actually getting players released. Does the does the URC cross over with anything like the rugby um championship and actually ruin players being able to um to get back and play in those games? I would wanna think South Africa would want to uh, be supporting that international team because they've uh, they've got a big World Cup coming up. Big teams to play. You wanna be getting as much practice in with as many, you know, starting players as possible. And the rugby championship is a, a really good, uh, really good way to do that. Uh, rugby challenge four is not great, honestly. Basically, a copy paste uh, job from the previous game, but with like half the licenses. Oh, really? So rugby challenge three, you think was uh, was the way to go? If I was gonna, well, if I could still pick one up, I can't pick uh, any of them up anymore. Well taken by Chris Harris at the back of the uh, the line out there. I thought it was meant to be Finn Russell. That's not how we do things in Scotland. We mi we mix it up a bit. Scotland like. Uh, Playing dangerously, or oh, nearly managing to take that one down, but Brex going to uh, to beat us to it. Um, Crusaders lost 25-24 uh, to the Fijian Drua. Is that how you uh, pronounce that? Um, yeah, that was the, that was the highlights. I, I I think I saw of that one, um, and it looked like a was that Chris Harris? <laughs> Is that what I just witnessed? No, it wasn't George Turner. All right, if it was if it was my centres again. Putting myself under, under pressure for this one. Um, yeah, it looked like a pretty stacked Crusaders team as well, right? I don't think it was a it was a B team. I heard I heard a couple of the names when they were you know they're passing the ball along. I heard like um, you know te players you're hearing in the New Zealand team are in that in that team. So I can't imagine they would have been uh, too happy with with that loss. I try to read chat and also play games. Always a danger. Oh, couldn't manage to get back across. Well done, Xander Ferguson though with the interception. Beautiful. Okay, we're a man down. But time for a bit of uh, bit of game management here. Finn Russell. Oh, that's not the pass I wanted. Ah, oh, we'll take a penalty though. Hey, nice. Um, AJP says the Blues' first try is outrageous. I did see. Um, oh, was it was it the Southern Hemisphere Championship? There was a try the other day from somewhere, 
uh, which I saw, I only saw it on, on Twitter, of someone scoring a try, like, instantly from the kickoff of the game. And it, it might now be the fastest try ever. It literally, like, kicked off. He just caught the ball and ran over. It was, like, three seconds. It's like, well, that's unbeatable. People have uh, people are taking tries to new limits at the minute. Uh, Crusaders won... Uh, do the lineup. Uh, Crusaders won 34-28 against the Blues. Um... And the Blues still got a lot of players now. I, the last thing I remember hearing about the, the Blues, the, the Blues had a good team um, in terms of their players. Yeah, Caleb Clark on the wing. Um, Bowden Barrett was playing for the Blues the last time I saw him. And then I think he... Has he gone to Japan now? Um, Mark Talia was 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 at the Blues the last time I was I was watching it as well. Dalton Papali. Uh, there were some big players in the uh, in the Blues team. And it, it just seemed to me that the the Crusaders had a little bit just more ferocity in the, uh, in the games. But the Blues had a very good team. Um, on their side as well. I'm, I've got to be right in saying that most of the, the New Zealand team is made up of Crusaders and Blues players, right? Um, or they were. <laughs> they're, they're, a lot of them playing in Japan now, aren't they? Because uh, I think Damien McKenzie was also looking at going to Japan at one point. Um, Odin Barrett was looking at Japan as well, if I remember. I think a lot of people are going over to Japan. I think that's where the uh, the big money is. I wonder, I wonder is anyone showing... Um, Japanese club level rugby. Can we get that in the UK? That might be fun to watch. Another try for Duan van der Merwe. Two from two touches on the ball, basically. Because um, I remember that the first time I heard about the Japanese league was uh, was Hadley Parks. He was um, he was going over to the what was it called? The something Wild Knights. And I was like, that's a cool name. That's a cool name for a team. I think the Japanese league is is. Isn't it like quite American? Like American football, they've all got like, you know, like an area and then like a cool name after them. <laughs> you know, it's not just like, oh, Minnesota. It's like the Minnesota Vikings. It's like they've all got cool names with them. <laughs> I think the Japanese league's kind of like that. They have like a, a, a name followed by some cool words to, to make them sound fierce. And I quite like that. A little bit more showy. You've got breakdancing in the Southern Hemisphere leagues. You've got cool names in the Japan leagues. We need something for the URC. Oh, Finn Russell get on the end of this one. Oh, nicely done by Finn Russell and through a third tackler as well, but somehow we got turned over. How do we get turned over there? We had so many men overlapping. We get there. Nope. Oh, we're going for a box kick here. We'll see how this works. Oh, we just ran outside the mark. Right, Duan van der Merwe doing a Duan van der Merwe special. Running around the outside and then running it back in. Finn Russell to Hugh Jones. Right, let's kick that downfield. Someone's got to outrun that, right? Where's Kyle Stain? Get there, boy. <laughs> you meant to have speed. You're a winger. Go. Good tackle. I really wish Capuozzo was in this game. I really wish you could, like, add him into uh, into the Italian team. I really like... I think it'd be, be cool to add players like that. I think he's actually in um, one of the club-level teams in this game. So maybe you could make an Italian team. I did make my own Italian team on, uh, on Rugby 20. Um... And tried to make it more like the Six Nations team. Maybe you could actually do it in this game and try and like add him in and make a bit more of a uh, of an Italian team. Or oh, go on out wide. Go on Van der Merwe on this way again. Let's go for a little cheeky grubber kick around that one. No, oh, doesn't manage to get there. Good cover by the fullback though, shutting us down. Playing it out. Bang, Schumann again. I thought Schumann had a good tournament actually. I was quite impressed. The only thing about Schumann is he, he just occasionally gives away a couple too many penalties that like don't need to happen. He's like one of those defensive players. He, I think he like takes one for a team, but it's always him. <laughs> so many times he gives penalties away at the breakdown. It's like, that's quite a clear penalty, but it slows down the opposition attack, but it's always him. <laughs> someone needs to uh, needs to let uh, someone else take the uh, the brunt of that one. I'm definitely offside there, ref, but uh, that's fine. Don't, don't need to pay attention to that. George Turner back on the field from his yellow card. When did he come back on? Don't even know, but he's back. Good pass there from Chris Harris. Right. Duan van der Merwe, two defenders to beat. Oh, what a good tackle, though, by the Italian winger. Let's try and spread this out Why Gilchrist. Oh, there might be a gap there for Watson to run into. Doesn't make it. We've still got that. Surely we've got numbers on this right-hand side. Oh, Finn Russell. Give the pass, boy. Skinner. Oh, no. <laughs> I pushed that button. As soon as I pushed it, I knew that had gone wrong. Where are all my players? It feels like they have twice as many players as me. Get it out wide. There we go. One-on-one. -on -one. That's what we need. Oh, well. No, we don't. Apparently, the uh, who is the right winger as standard for this Italy team? Is it Padovani? I'm not sure who actually starts every game on the wing. It might be Federico Mori. Uh, but he's doing defensively pretty well today in terms of one-on-one -on -one tackles. 
See if we can get there. Oh, another good shot. This is a long half. I've actually just thought as well, I think I might have left the games on eight minute games from when I was doing the, uh, the Mad Dragon Championship. <laughs> so these games actually might be going on for slightly longer than I intended to be. I normally do five minute games for the uh, for the streams just so we don't get stuck on uh, on too many games. Oh, another hands in the ruck. Do we take three? Do we go for the uh, for the driving mall? Oh, the wind's going the wrong way. That's irritating. I'm not going to get a lot of ground here. That's all right. We'll take that. Uh, oh my god, uh, loads of people have been chatting as well. Uh, 38, 20, 35, nil. People have been uh, giving their guesses. People think I'm getting into the high 30s, do you? You guys have so much confidence in me. Okay, now I need to score a try. <laughs> that's, uh, that's suddenly a big ask out of nowhere. Finn Russell. Yellow card. Paolo Garbisi down the back. We'll make the most of it. Um, yeah, the uh, URC final. Stormers beat Bulls 18-13 in Cape Town. Yeah, both SA teams. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that being a thing. They sort of just come into the into the tournament and then they uh, they both in the final um so yeah maybe I, I can see that actually being a bit of a loss for for some of the other southern hemisphere teams to to lose competitive teams like that right let's go for a driving mall here scottish driving mall um didn't actually pay off as much as i expected against italy in the actual game um i picked george turner in the fantasy i really thought scotland would would go for driving malls all day long uh, but did not come off for them at all. But uh, Jamie Ritchie and mine, absolutely. Smashing it. Good job. Um, I think the URC starts before the rugby championship ends. Uh, so SA URC teams don't have any Springboks at the start. Oh, they'll just, um, just not have them for the club level games, you mean. That's probably to be expected. Good test of depth as well. You know, if you're missing uh, some of your key players. The referee just, like, stood in front of the ball. What was he up to then? Um... I think that'll be a good a good little test for them, though. I'm looking forward to see how they get on. I have no idea about injury status for a lot of players as well. Um, did that miss? Did that go in? Because um, there, there was quite a few injuries suffered um, in the last sort of few tournaments. We lost um, Lacani Am for the, for the for the Springboks. I remember him going out because um, there was loads of talking points about Jesse Creel um, moving into that centre for, for for South Africa. A lot of people were not happy about that. I thought he was okay. <laughs> Oh, what a horrible bounce. Good pop bass inside. There you go. That's what I want my centers to be doing. Playing with each other. Actually working together as a team. That's what I need. And then Schoeman. <laughs> Giving away a turnover. Oh, they've still got a yellow card as well. What am I doing? Why am I not making the most of this? People are expecting me to get into the 30s. People have high hopes. People believe I'm good at this game. Straight out. Good. Get us back up there. Good ground. Um... That was uh, Rugby Europe, uh, the fast try. He charged, charged down uh, from a kickoff. Yeah, I, I I can't remember what the what the team was or where it was. I just saw the uh, the highlights from it. But uh, it kind of reminded me of... Um, is it Mac Hansen against France last year? Where, uh, where Ireland just sort of kicked off the ball. <laughs> and he just caught it and ran. He just scored a try instantly. Or oh, Kyle Stain, a lot of work here. Back inside, Ali Price. Oh, got to give it. Got to give the pass. Right, come on. Big ask. Here it comes. Chris Harris. Cross field kick. Juan van der Merwe. Oh, well, okay. Apparently, he had that really well covered. Scooban! <laughs> Never going to get there. It's always worth a crack, right? you got to send the prop on the wing on his own, completely isolated. What could go wrong? Another clearance spell. That's another thing they need to fix for, uh, for Rugby 24. Why, why have you got your feet in touch? Hand them over. Um, they need to fix that yellow card thing about players just running back on, because that is awful. Like that, how, how does that even get past? <laughs> like anyone? Like is that not just such a, a well-known thing in in rugby? You have a yellow card, you have to wait for, you know, end of play, and then you can come back on. I might do another video actually. I did one leading up to rugby twenty-two about like the you know ten. Uh, like things I want to see come in Rugby 22, and almost none of them happen. Um, I might do I might do another one of them for uh, for Rugby 24. Because uh, I'm sure there's quite a lot of stuff to explore. I might go and revisit that video. Oh, do I have had the murder? Look at the pace. Getting chased down. Third try. Doing well. Um, I might go back and revisit that video. See what actually got changed for Rugby 22. And then... Uh, 
do some uh, update that video a bit for what I want to see for, for Rugby 24. That could be fun. Oh man, it's hydrate. <laughs> it's so easy just to talk in streams. You forget, and then you say like, "Oh my god, my voice is like breaking up." Um, you went to the Sun Wolves game once when they were in Super Rugby. The Japanese fans are great. Love the passion they have for the game there, uh, despite it being a lot less popular than other sports. See again, that's another cool. Name. The Sun Wolves. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> I love the Japanese teams now. I think they're great. It's a kick from Finn Russell. Yeah, no, I, I'd love to see a bit of Japan. I, th there's a few, there's quite a few teams internationally that I've never sort of seen play. Japan would be one I'd, I'd really like to go watch. Um, they just seem like such a respectful, <laughs> just culture, to be fair, not just a team. Um, I did see the uh, the photographs that came out after the last World Cup. They got they got knocked out, didn't they, after qualifying in their, the, the quarters. Um, they got knocked out in the quarters. And there was a, a picture that started circulating around after they lost that game got knocked out of the World Cup. Everyone's like as sad as they could be in that team. Um, oh, no, it goes down. Um, but they um, they they showed like a picture of their locker room and like they they like cleaned the entire locker room so that like the cleaning staff didn't have to clean it. It's like, that's awesome. That's such a nice <laughs> level of respect. You see so many other teams. It's like, uh, like rugby's such a big part of... Uh, of uh, respect is such a big part of rugby, rather. Um, you know, it's so nice after, like, a game of people just trying to kill each other that they all get to shake hands and stuff. But, you know, going out of your way to tidy the locker room. How nice is that? I love that. Oh, go on. And again. And again. And back inside. Hugh Jones. Oh, I didn't get there. What a cover tackle. And they turn that over as well. How have you turned that over? Chase him down. Chase him down. Put him under pressure. We'll have a scrum. What have we got left? Eight minutes on the clock? Going for a substitute won't help you. All right, what did people say? People said like 35-ish, didn't they? Can I get to 35? I think I do well. Let's see if we can get a try from here. In fact, you know what? Matt Ferguson's taking this one. Boosh! All day long. Under the posts. Let's have one. Um... Captain Lewis says, uh, What do we think of the red... Card, I'm going to guess that meant on uh, on Super Saturday. I'm going to have <laughs> the joy of typing quickly in chat. Uh, I'll, 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 do, uh, I'll break that down for you. I think you mean, what do you think of the red card uh, happened on uh, on Super Saturday? And by which I think you uh, are going to be talking about the Freddie Stewart incident, which uh, is a big talking point, right? So I said in the, uh, the review video for that game, um, I thought it was harsh. I thought that was a really harsh red card. Um... I was much more inclined to go along the lines of like rugby incident where um, it, it hits the guidelines of a red card. A lot of people were not happy with my take on that. Uh, a lot of people were like, this is the most clear red card I have ever seen. I was, I, I was like, really? I feel like there's, I feel there's like a lot to dissect in that red card. I do not think that is clear cut at all. Um, I would have like at most said a yellow card um i don't think it you know was would have been enormously fair because obviously hugo keenan also had to go off um oh get that bass out wide come on um but i i would have been happy i, w I don't even know if i would have been like wanted that to have been a penalty um uh like fair enough given as a penalty there was head contact um, I, I would have been happy to have not even seen a yellow card given for that but i understand when you like listen to the referee and he breaks it down it hits all the guidelines to be a red card. Like, everything that he says in the game is like, yeah, I can see that. Does he have clear line of sight? Yes. Well, yeah, he's, you know, he's chasing a loose pass. Has he come from distance? Yes. Has head contact been made? Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right, I, I see how they, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to step away from the red card um, thing because it hits so many guidelines for the red card. Uh, I would have been happy to have seen that as as, as a yellow card, though. Um, I still think Ireland were going to win that game, whether it was a red card or not. But I did think it took a lot of the the wind out of the sails of the of the the England team. Um, they had to play a little bit more defensively. They had to play a little bit more just reserved, just to just to keep track of that extra man. Ireland actually didn't exploit the extra man for the first sort of twenty minutes of that second half either, really. So. I still think they would have won. I would have just liked to have seen it not be a red card to have enjoyed the sport a bit more, whereas a lot of people get bogged down in the rules. Um, 
I actually think I, I think a solution for, for stuff like this. Um, get ready, guys. I'm going to solve all of uh, World Rugby's problems right here. <laughs> get ready for this one. This guy with two and a half thousand subscribers on YouTube solves solves the issue. So we try. We they've tried a few things with the um, with the card system, right? Like we, you know, yellow cards are yellow cards. Fair enough. Red cards really do feel like on occasions they can they can ruin games. They tried out that that twenty minute red card thing, uh, where you know player goes off 20 minutes later another player comes back on to replace them but then people were like oh but it's it doesn't feel like you're penalizing a team for someone doing something horrendous um and, and there seems to be like no middle ground for it i don't know why they don't just add a third card right so you could oh is that gonna stay in go on carl stain we got this no one said i could get 40 <laughs> Maybe we can get 40. So if you add in a third card, right? You've got a yellow, you've got your red. Add in a, a whatever color, orange. Let's go in the middle. Red, yellow, and orange, okay? Yellow card stays as a yellow card. Misdemeanors, uh, you know, a, a player trips another player and it's a bit, you know, outrageous. You can't do stuff like that. Give a yellow card a yellow card. Red card can be uh, really severe things. A player has punched someone else in the face. Uh, you've taken a guy out in the air and he spun upside down. He's landed on his neck. You've dump tackled someone. Uh, you've stamped on him. I don't know. Like, you know, serious things. Like, wow, this is a, this is a, this is hard line. Like, you need to be banned for a while after this action you've taken. We got to 40. Um, have that as a red card still. Keep that exactly the same. But then add a third card that's an orange card. But the orange card could be what currently is known as the 20-minute red card, right? And that can be that an incident has occurred where a player meets the guidelines of hitting a red card, but we don't think it was intentional and we don't think there was malice in it. It's just a lack of care and the things that happen have hit the guideline to be a red card. In that instance, orange card leave the field for 20 minutes and then a different player is allowed to come on you've done something silly but not on purpose but it has it's quite a serious thing you're not allowed to come back on the team is penalized a bit and then another player comes on in your place and you're just not allowed to come back on can be reviewed after the game if, if there's a ban or something right that way you don't ruin games you just have players removed for 20 minutes. The team still has to deal with 14 men for a long period of time. Uh, maybe you don't have a replacement for that guy. Maybe it's maybe you have an injured prop and then your next prop gets an orange card. Suddenly a hooker's got to come on, you know, a, a prop to, to replace you. Like you could still struggle to deal with that. Um, but an instant like the Freddie Stewart, uh, Hugo Keenan one, where I really feel like the ball has bounced forward. Hugo Keenan's doing everything he can to get back to it. It really looks to me like Freddie Stewart's going for the tackle, realizes he's dropped it, and then like tries to back out of it and and turns turning was the worst thing he could have ever done. But I understand that's a reflex, like, oh, I'm gonna get hit. I'll try and turn my head away. Um so it would be, oh, you've, you've hit him in the head, you've come from distance, but you've tried to back out of it, you haven't done a very good job. Um, but you know, so it's gonna be an orange card. You're going off for the rest of the game. But in 20 minutes, someone can come back on. And that way, England might have thought, oh, all we've got to do is manage the game for 20 minutes. Um, and then we get back to 15 and we can try and play on. One player doing a silly action doesn't detriment the team to a loss. I think it'd be an interesting idea. Um, just add a third card. I don't know why we have to stick with two. <laughs> it's either a yellow or a red. It's, it can only be one or the other. But that means that the, the punishment is so broad. Like the idea that you can... You can literally stamp on someone's face <laughs> and get a red card. Or you could do Freddie Stewart. Oh, I'm trying to back out of this. And I clocked him in the head. That's also a red card. It's like That's that's such a difference in, in action to me. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of people disagree with me on that. Um, the Japanese are awesome. Uh, you watched uh, Bach versus New Zealand uh, in 2019 World Cup in Japan. Amazing experience. Yeah, but, oh my God, that would... That, mega game <laughs> that'd be awesome i'd love to have seen that uh do you have oh hello my uh my scroll bar in my chat is not all the way down that's very weird um 
Looking at uh, details on Rugby24 Eco Software are gone. Big Ant are taking over completely. So likely uh, will be on a completely different engine. Same one they use for their AFL and NLR games. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, I can't say I've played a lot of the Big Ant Studios games. Um, I do enjoy Rugby22. Um, I thought Rugby20 was such a nice step up. For anyone who's who's never played Rugby 20 or Rugby 22, I would absolutely recommend getting Rugby 22 over Rugby 20 because there's a lot of extra positives for it, um, especially if it's on PC and you can download mods that can, um, uh, you know, enhance the teams and stuff. That That's really fun. Um, how are we doing at the minute? Oh, we're leading. Scotland in the lead with nine points. My face is covering the, uh, the point score, sorry. Uh, England are on six. Ireland on five. Wales on four. Wow, there's some big results going on in this uh, second round. Let's have a look at this, sorry. So France uh, lost to Wales, uh, and Ireland lost to uh, to England. Wow! So we are we are ahead. We're the only team that's won every game so far. Uh, but I am really looking forward to uh, to see what Big Ant Studio is actually able to do with the game. Um, because I I feel like this game is almost there. They just need to make some tweaks. They need to change some of the rules. They need to change some of the ways things happen in the game. Um. Uh, and this game could be really solid. Adding an extra difficulty level for this game was really good, um, and I really hope they, I really hope they manage to enhance it because Rugby World Cup uh, 2011 is so much fun. Uh, let me change the, uh, the things back down. Ah, my chat's just reloaded. There we go. <laughs> all, the, all the comments just suddenly jolted up on my, uh, on my screen. Um, uh, do do do. Sorry, where was I? I'm trying to go back through my own chat now. Uh, Super Rugby has a three-card system now. Oh, do they? Oh, I didn't know that. 10-minute uh, yellow, 20-minute red, and the full red. There was a 20-minute red at the Hurricanes. Oh, well, there you go. So they've stolen my idea before I came up with it. That's what I'm uh, taking from that scenario. <laughs> so they, so literally what I just said. But uh, but again, why do they call it, like, the 10-minute red? Just call it orange. Just do that, you know. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, Kieran says, uh, can't donate as I have uh, no money at the moment. Uh, also impressed with Rio Dyer's performance. No worries, Kieran. Never feel like you uh, you have to donate. Donating is something, if you feel the, the obligation and you enjoy the content enough and you, you of course, have the money to hand, great. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, never feel like uh, you have to do it. Yeah, Rio Dyer's performance, um, he had some 50-50 uh, some moments, but Rio Dyer in attack uh, is one I was impressed with. Uh, got over the try line a couple of times, made a nuisance for himself. Um, he might have even been the player with the most meters made. I'm not 100% on that, um, as in from the Wales team, like exclusively. Um, but he, he certainly was getting up there for meters made. I'm not sure if Reese Zamet would overtake him because, of course, he had his, his interception try where he ran half the field. Uh, that will have helped him for meters made and stuff. Uh, but Rio Dai, certainly game on game, had a lot of meters made. Thought he, uh, thought he had a good attacking performance. Defensively, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he... Where is my Scotland team? Boys, where are we? <laughs> I've got Finn Russell or George Turner. That's my two options of passing. Come on, boys. We've got to get out of here. Um, defensively, I felt uh, Rio Dyer struggling a little bit. He's not uh, He's not an enormous presence. Um, and I think teams definitely exploited that. He's not a, He's not the biggest guy in the world. Um, so a lot of wingers getting out there and, uh, and, and really putting him under pressure. He had a couple of tackles on his own try line where he was the last man to get there. Tackling around the shoulders. Players still go on to score a try. Not quite, you know, just not taking the legs, not barreling him into uh, into touch. Josh Adams had to cover him quite a few times on that defensive side. Um, but he's a young lad. He's got a lot of room to uh, to improve. Uh, you know, he's his first real big entry to the, uh, to the international scene. A lot to ask from him. Um, so I am looking forward to see uh, how he progresses. Oh, man. Look at this. Like Furlong showing off. I only just realized while well, we're playing Ireland. <laughs> this is like a big game. Uh, feel free to drop down uh, score predictions in the chat uh, for this one. What did we do in the last one, Vice? It was 40 nil, the last one. Uh, Ireland, uh, a bit more of a, a different animal, though, to uh, to Italy, especially in this mod. Ireland can uh, can really get up, although this game was a really fun fixture in the, uh, the Mad Dragon Six Nation series. Uh, there was a, a really big incident with a yellow card and all, all hell broke loose in this one. I got proper amped up for me, that one. <laughs> I re oh, Chris Harris! <laughs> what are you doing? How do you not catch that ball? You're literally the only man there. Oh, man, we've got... Oh, there's so many men overlap here. We're going to have to do extremely well. Good tackle. 
Get out wide quickly. Don't let him through. Duan van der Merwe, great tackle. Get in, boys. They pass back left. Doesn't work for them. Get across. Come on. Get in there. Oh, my God. Ireland just win every breakdown in this game. Come on. Oh, solid shot there. <laughs> they, just, they just got the ball back instantly. The Ireland Rugby 22 team must be the only team that actually recycles the ball faster than the Ireland team in real life. <laughs> oh my god, it's half time. We haven't scored anything. Oh, being put under uh, under pressure for this one. I also reduced the time down from eight minutes to five minutes. That won't help me that much. Amish Watson hasn't lost any stamina. He hasn't done anything this entire half. Outrageous. Come on, Finn. Uh, chase down that ball. Oh, maybe. Take the tackle on Dan Sheehan. We don't want him going anywhere. What's people's views on... Um, I, I've seen quite a few stuff coming up about um, Team of the Tournaments. Loads of people doing different Team of the Tournament things. Um, and I think the most consistent uh, player at hooker for Team of the Tournament... Oh, Van der Merwe. Get in there. Uh, has been Dan Sheehan. Um, I'm really interested to know what other people's thoughts on, on Team of the Tournament stuff are. Uh, because I thought Dan Sheehan had a superb final game. Um... But um, uh, looking back over his, his like, tournament, uh, he came on from the bench in two games. Uh, he didn't play in one of them, and he got injured in the first 10 minutes in the, uh, in the other and then had a superb game in, uh, in that final round. Um, but I've seen him in lots of people's um, team of the tournaments, um, considering not an enormous amount of game time. Um, what would you guys pick as your, your hooker for team of the, of the tournament? Because a, a couple of decisions that people have made have, have sort of really stumped me because not that I, I think he's had a bad tournament by any means but I just feel like having one good game versus playing a whole tournament as opposed to someone like uh, Julien Marchand who I thought played really well uh, George Turner made big big inroads for, for Scotland even in a game where he got yellow carded I thought he, he had a good game um, I was quite surprised to see so many people uh, going for Dan Sheehan oh my god I can't get the ball off this Ireland team at all Good tackle, right? Yeah, I can't get the ball. <laughs> what is going on? I can't win a single. Let's get. Come on, boys. Josh van der Fleer, stop bouncing off my tackles. I actually played a uh, an online game of this uh, off stream, and I have to say, it was very, very stable, and I was very impressed. Um, I've played online on the Xbox quite a few times, uh, and it was a bit. It's a bit janky. It's a bit... There's definitely a, a bonus towards one person rather than the other when you're playing the uh, the game. Uh, on the PC, it's actually quite stable. I know we've played some online stuff in... Um, on live streams and stuff, but I do think me live streaming at the same time as me trying to play multiplayer doesn't help this game at all. Oh, no. Ali Price, what are you doing picking up the ball there? What a terrible move. <laughs> all on his own. No, can't get through there either. Where are we sp right, spread wide? Because this Irish team is just all over me here. I can't get the ball out. Literally, I can't do anything. There's the 80 minute mark. Right, guys, we've got to run. <laughs> 80 meters upfield. Nice and easy. Here we go. Oh, there's no one there. They just have an overlap everywhere. Do they have 16 men on the field? How can they be everywhere? Is this what it felt like playing Ireland <laughs> in, the, in the actual Six Nations? It's just a room. Give me the ball. Give me the ball, Sexton. Put it down. Come on, get in. No, nope. and again. Got to hold there. Yeah, they're going to go left. I can see that. Like Furlong just faked me out. He's <laughs> a big target, boys. You've got to get onto him. Oh, good tackle there. Schumann again. Defensively been great. This all tournament so far. Right, we're away. Come on. Schumann, and again, of course, who else is it going to be other than Schumann who does that? Duan van der Merwe, come on, boy. Pick it on the ground. Come on, boy, you got there. We got it. <laughs> what an effort. What an absolute effort that game was. Outrageous. Uh, Green Gamer said 21-0. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I need 21-0. Uh, Captain Lewis said 19-22 to Scotland. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, are you, are you doubting my defense in this game? <laughs> I've still not conceded a point yet. I'm very happy with how the defense is going. Um, 
Kia says, I had uh, an 80% accuracy, uh, but if I didn't guess Wales would beat Ireland, England, and Scotland could have been around a 90% accuracy in the uh, the predictions stuff you mean. Yeah, the, the I was quite happy with my prediction versus reality game. Um, I, I was really happy with how well I actually did. I, I had a bit too much faith in Wales. I really thought Wales playing at home back under Gatland would do well against England, but yeah, no. <laughs> Lucky to get one try by the end of it. Um... You really struggled in the fantasy, though. Uh, the one week, I had a score of 199.5. Uh, but last week, uh, when I put big players on, like, five players score me zero points. Yeah, it's the joy of the fantasy. Sometimes picking the best people is, like, the worst idea. Sometimes playing clever is the dumbest decision, as I got to find out in the final round. My gut told me to pick Dan Sheehan. <laughs> and it went terribly. Uh, should have Should have gone for Dan Sheehan. Went for went for George Turner. Absolutely had my mindset on that Scotland would go for ten driving malls, get over the try line. No, nope, wrong call. Did the wrong move. Uh, you, <laughs> you predicted a three nil kick, a drop goal for the win. It nearly got there. To be fair, I was struggling to get in the half for a drop goal. Um, Captain Lewis says, uh, for Team of the Tournament, Hooker, you'd have to pick Jamie George. Oh, you would go for, for Jamie George. Yeah, there was a couple of picks. Team of the Tournament is such a weird thing, right? Because it's such a, a personal thing. Um, I haven't done one on the channel because it, it just ends up being people calling you out for not picking other players. And I get a bit bored of it. But I've seen some people's Team of the Tournaments. Um, and I, well, something I'm not a fan of. I'm really interested. Every, everyone in the chat now, what is your view on a Team of the Tournament when you see it on any online Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, wherever, where they do a team of the tournament, but they put players in their team of the tournament who didn't play in that position. What's your view on it? Because it really annoys me. <laughs> I've never really been very good at doing it. That's why I'm, any of the team of the weeks or team of the tournaments, I always go by like their shirt number. Um, I saw someone's team of the tournament um, on the Sunday after Super Saturday. It was on Twitter. I can't remember who it was. It was like one of the, the various pundits they have. Um, and their back row, their back row uh, was um, Keelan Doris and Josh van der Fleer. Awesome. No worries. Played really well. Number six, blindside flanker. Who was the best blindside flanker of the entire tournament in this person's team of the week or team of the tournament? He picked Charles Olivon. He plays open side. He played open side for the entire tournament. Jelanche had a great tournament at, at blind side. Uh, Francois Cross came on, had a good tournament at blind side. No, no, I've just moved Charles Olivon across. He didn't play there. <laughs> I know positions can be like a bit interchangeable. You can move locks. You can put wingers on opposite wings. Um, and flankers, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you can do it with flankers. Some flankers can swap between six and seven, right? But it is a different position. If they played in that position, they might not have had a good enough tournament. I get really annoyed by it. <laughs> but I feel like I'm in a real minority. I feel like a lot of people don't really mind it at all. Uh, and it is just me. Um, let's see how the uh, the standings went. Uh, what am I looking for now? What's the, uh, the results? Oh, there it is. Um, okay, so we beat Scotland. No, we are Scotland. We. Oh, I've lost all my, uh, all my chat. Oh, it's doing that thing again that it did the last time we did it, where I have to click off of it and click back onto it. <laughs> I love streaming. <laughs> so much can uh, can go wrong. I absolutely love it. Uh, right, I need to click here and do that. Okay. Um, okay, loads of you, loads of you dropped in the chat as well while it was broken on uh, on my end. Um, oh my god, loads of people dropped. Oh my god, I gotta try and uh, go through these a little bit. Uh, France are winning the World Cup, in my opinion. Potentially South Africa. Actually, I changed my mind. Wales will win the World Cup. I just see it happening. I have no idea what the odds are for Wales doing the World Cup, but if you want to put money on, there's the chance to get a, uh, a good amount of money there, maybe, <laughs> if they win. If they don't win, you've just wasted a bunch of money. But uh, yeah, I haven't done my, my World Cup breakdown. Um, would, people, would people enjoy seeing that on a stream? Because I've never done anything like that before. Would anyone enjoy... Uh, like a because it would be long, right? For a World Cup, it, there's a lot of games to go over. But doing get all the pools and go through like their game by game, be like, who do I think is going to win each game? Work out how that would finish off in the order of the the pool stages, and then who would go on to play who in the quarterfinals? 
who do I think would win that, go on to the semi-finals and the finals, and who would win? Because I don't even know at this point. I, I, at some point, I will sit down and do that because I'll do betting for who I think is going to win the final or what have you. Um, I will, could turn it into a video. If people enjoyed that type of thing, though, we could do that as a stream. And uh, it would probably take a while to do. And it'd be kind of fun because I could also be like, oh, you know, France versus New Zealand. Oh, I think this team's going to win. Who do you guys think? And you, everyone could jump in the chat. Or we could even do your guys' um, like World Cup. Like, r rather than it just be me saying who I think we, we win, we could do like, put the games up. I could put a poll in chat. France versus New Zealand. Who do you think we win? You guys vote. And then we could build the, the Mad Dragon subscriber thing. That could be fun. That sort of just sprung to mind. I'm like, oh, that could be a real good one at some point. Um, I don't know how I'd have to set that up. I'm sure I'd have to get a bunch of graphics and stuff ready to try and work that out. I wonder if there's like an online thing that you could uh, use to use that. If you, anyone knows of something that could do that nice and easily, um, feel free to uh, to add that because that could be uh, that could be fun. Um, oh, we got a thing. Uh, Scrud95 has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Scrud. Thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, read back through. Does the AI in this game ever go for drop goals? Um, yeah, they do. They do. They they lean more towards penalties. If you offer them a penalty, they'll take three uh, on legend difficulty. Um, I'm not sure if there's something. Yeah, I've never seen a game end three nil because they go for drop goal. If it's a close game towards the end, they will hit a drop goal. Um, but it's not quite like Rugby 2011. Rugby 2011 was brutal. As soon as they got in your 22, they uh, drop goal. <laughs> And you're trying to play as a, against a big team. That's a, that's a really hard thing to uh, to take on. Uh, Oscar says hi. Hello, Oscar. How are you doing this fine evening? Um, the AI in Rugby Challenge will go for drop goals uh, in the late game when the score is close. That's nice, though. Again, that's something that you want to be seeing added. I want an AI to adapt to how I'm playing and challenge me in, in a way. If I'm clearly demonstrating to the game, I'm going to play out of my own 22. I want the AI to be like, great, we won't drop so many people back for a kicking option. We'll push them up front. We'll target the breakdown more, win a turnover, go for a drop goal. We'll try and punish you for trying to play out. I would love that. If someone could develop an AI, that would actually be able to, to land that. That would be awesome. Um, uh, can you play as England versus Wales, please? I, we can absolutely do that. We'll finish the uh, the Six Nations. We can do that. We do actually have an actual England team in this game as well, so it, it, it feels a little bit better than just watching all the fake players that people have um, if, uh, if if you own the game yourself. Um, Oscar says, who were you supporting? I was supporting uh, Wales, which is uh, a tough uh, a tough bus to be on <laughs> for the journey at this point. Uh, it's... Hopefully, <laughs> just watching them uh, play games. Oh, sorry, that's what I was doing before I started doing all this. Uh, I was talking about the scores that happened here as well, wasn't I? France beat Italy 25-14. It's not that far off what the actual score was. Uh, and Wales beat England 27 points to 24. So Wales are having a good game. Ireland have beaten Wales 32 points to 24. Italy lost, oh, 32-0 to, uh, to England. Wasn't that, was that actually the score two years ago? What did they lose to England by? 32 or 33 to nil in the Six Nations. It was it was pretty bang on. Scotland versus France. A tough one. A tough old game. Um, I'll tell you, I'll start this off. Um, yeah, a lot of people said they uh, they hated the um, yeah the the team of the tournament thing where people put people in positions. I, I I'm really not a fan of it. Like it's it's like especially things like wingers as well. Wingers really annoy me. Like oh. Uh, like Damien Pinot had a great week uh, so he's going to be on my right wing uh, but then uh, Josh Adams also had a great week uh, but he can also play fullback so he's my fullback of this round you're like no no <laughs> if he played if he played on the right wing he didn't play well at full reward a fullback that should that should be how it has to be you shouldn't be allowed to just pick people in different positions I don't know where that ends either because if you can just put people in a position they can play is the best hooker of the tournament not Josh van der Fleer? Because he can throw lineouts. <laughs> no one competes that, right? You can't do that. You can't move players around. What do you do with someone like Geordie Barrett? He can play winger, fly half, centre or fullback. Does every week you just put him somewhere in your team? <laughs> you can't just move people. It's cheating. Um, yeah, a couple of people said they would actually watch me do the uh, the World Cup breakdown. That, that could be a fun video. I will have to find... Um, 
I'll, I'll have to find a way of trying to, to do that. Obviously, I could just put the, you know, the pools up on, on screen and do it on a piece of paper, but I want it to be like, oh, so you guys can actually see how we're doing the, the working out and stuff. Um, I'll try and think of a way to, to do that. If there is such a thing as like a World Cup simulator or something somewhere online, um, that could be fun to have a look into. In fact, they should do that, right? They should do that on the official World Cup page. They should let you pick the winner of every tournament and, like, build the tournament yourself. And then you could, like, share that online. And then everyone could sort of see how, how you got to predict the winner of the World Cup. That could be really fun. I need to work in a marketing team for someone. <laughs> I have all the good ideas, but no knowledge of how to actually perform them. Oh, man. Chris Harris ran off his line there to, to go for that interception. I've also just realized, um, I was complaining before about um, having to change my team in between rounds. And now that I'm playing it, I haven't actually had to change my team. It has kept my team the same time. So I've actually uh, done uh, Rugby 22 a bit of a disservice there. It did actually keep my team the same. Which is nice to see. Right, Stuart Hogg. Put that in the corner. Go on. Go on, get in that five meters. And he ran it into touch. We'll take that. Villiers, poor move. Um... Italy lost to England 33 to nil last year in Rome. Okay, so one point off. Hey, the game's the game's doing pretty accurate. There has been there has been a couple of things in this game where I have seen scores get very close to what actually happens. Somewhere encoded into this game, they uh, they actually got predictions correct. Uh, Oscar asks, uh, Ireland, your thoughts? Amazing. Thoughts over. <laughs> uh, oh, Ireland are just something else, right? Ireland, uh, Ireland are in a bit of a different league at the minute. Um, to be an island sport now, great. We were t talking about before that they also got the Grand Slam of the under-20s. Um, just to double down, just to be the best. Uh, the Women's World, uh, World Cup, the Women's Six Nations starts soon, right? Um, I don't know a lot about Women's Six Nations. I've sort of caught the odd game here or there. Um, but from my limited understanding, I think England and France are the top two teams for, for Women's League, right? Um, I do remember catching a couple of the, uh, of the, the island games, though. Um, and they look like they've got some some fierce competitors in there as well. So if if the if the Irish women can make it, three of three, let's go. Who won the under 18s? <laughs> Did Wales win anything? Can we can we have something? That'd be nice. There isn't a wooden spoon because <laughs> I actually have no idea how how the under 20s ended up. I might have a look at that actually this game after. I'll have a look at the uh, the under 20s uh, results because I'm actually not sure how that worked out. Oh, lovely interplay there for uh, a couple of the uh, the Scottish forwards. Try and spread this out wide. Finn Russell drop it back from Chris Harris. Gets a nice little pass to Hugh Jones. Or oh, lot to ask there for Kyle Stain. Gonna lose that one. Good job. Oh, Matt Ferguson taking it to the line. Trying to read chat. Trying to do two things at once. Shouldn't do that. Uh, da -da -da -da. uh do you know there is a delay in chat? Yeah, uh, that is because uh, I've got it to set up like that. <laughs> uh, because I, I have pretty good internet. It's pretty good at coping. Um, but just to uh, take a bit of the brunt out on the stream, um, it's it, it's not quite... I think it's about 20 seconds, um, but it just means it, c it can delay a little bit. Um, some other things set up for, um, like, profanity filters as well. Um, it, it's like, oh, 20 seconds delayed is so, like, the, the stream elements bot and stuff can pick up if people put, like, loads of profanity and stuff. Um, it, like, gives it time to catch it before it's just shown directly like on the uh, on the live stream so it is slightly behind uh it's not it's not terrible though uh but it does help the, uh, the stream out a little bit but also saying that uh sometimes things just go wrong <laughs> on my end uh sometimes the chat just turns into a black square uh, and i have to sort of reload it which is if you ever hear the the game audio stop and uh, me join back in it's because the uh the, the chat's gone i have to click back off of it and then back onto it for it to work i don't know what that is i've never heard of anyone else streaming have to suffer with that just me. <laughs> um, I'll try to read the chat again. I actually need to sort this defensive line out. Oh, Cyril Bai hitting the line. We're at half time. If I can kick it out, uh, I'll want to make the most of it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe Villiers going to do it on my behalf. Or maybe not. Maybe he's going to do really well at it. Okay, hang on. Right. What's box kicking this? Is it X? Yeah. <laughs> Too much rugby 2011 recently. Um... Uh, let me have a quick uh, little bit of read back through the chat. Uh, is this a modded version of the game? Yes, it is. Uh, you can go find the mod through uh, through a wonderful YouTuber that I found. Uh, he's a French YouTuber called Alex Gaming. You can go look him up. Um, you can also go onto like the rugby forum pages. 
um, and there's mods there and stuff. It's a really fun mod. I like having the teams back in. I do think it uses a slightly older patch of the game. Um, so you do notice a few more things going wrong, like teams just not catching the ball or a few more things go wrong. I'd much rather have a few more licenses in the in in the in this game though, because even a final patch for the official game, it wasn't fluid. <laughs> so I don't mind that. I'd rather have a couple of extra teams in. I think my uh, my light's flashing at me as well. I'm not hopefully that is, or it's just my eyes going. Um Josh said you definitely watched the World Cup vid. I might look into this. I'm so glad I've come up with this as a, as a concept now. I might look into that. Uh, can you play this on Rugby 2022? Uh, this is this is Rugby 22 we are playing right now. I don't know what you mean by can you play. Uh, as in like the Six Nations tournament maybe? Uh, you can't play a Six Nations tournament on like baseline game. If you get it on PC and download some mods, you can do the Six Nations like we're doing now. Um, but yeah, not not a baseline game. They didn't have any of the, uh, the licenses for the Six Nations. They have a version of it, uh, and I can't think what they've called it. I think it's like the Nations Championship. It's basically the same thing, um, but it's just not called the Six Nations. And um, I think the scoring system is also slightly off on it to make it not <laughs> not official. Uh, Green Games are 21 -0. Oh, yeah, for this game. I didn't do uh, score predictions for this game. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah 21-0. Oh, confidence in me again. Unless you think France 21-0. <laughs> uh, I hope Rugby 24 gets the stadiums. Uh, make such a difference to the atmosphere of the game. Yeah, stadiums are one of the things I've never really understood. Um, uh, I, I, I don't I don't know why it isn't. I don't know why a stadium wouldn't want their game, their stadium licensed in um, in the game. Uh, the, the one I, I only know the most uh, sort of about in being in Wales is like the Principality Stadium, right? So the WRU and you have the Principality Stadium. Principality is like a, like a building society, right? So they changed it to the Principality Stadium. They've got their name on the stadium. It's awesome. Wales are in this game. The WRU agreed to have it in. All the Welsh clubs are in. If you were Principality and Rugby 22 reached out to you and said, do you want your actual stadium to be in this game? It'll be the most modern rugby game on the market for everyone to play as and people that own this game in Wales can then play as the Wales team playing in the Principality. Why would you ever say no to that? Like, it, it can't cost you any money. You could have the word Principality... Oh, no, get back across! Oh, what a tackle! You could have the word Principality on, like, the billboards and stuff along the background. You literally gain free advertising. Damn it. <laughs> Couldn't stop that, Damien Pinot. But, like, you could have free advertising in a game for your own thing. Why would you not want it in? Why do you not reach out to game developers? I really hope we get actual stadiums. I hope you could do stuff like Principality roof open or close. That'd be great. Let's have some stadium-like impact as well. Maybe if you have, like, a... Um, in Rugby 2011, they had, I don't even know what to call it, like a momentum bar, where if you get like five or six tackles in a row and they're dominant tackles, you're pushing the team back, you're actually more likely to win a turnover the, the, the better you play. You could even have something like that built into the game. Oh, you're playing England at Twickenham? Oh, well, you know, suddenly your team finds it a bit harder to win turnovers. Like, you could have actual stadium impact. Maybe playing as the home team in that stadium gives that team a, a little bit of a boost. Like, in real life, people singing the, the chants and stuff or the, or the national anthems in the background. No idea what the, the licenses are for national anthems, but there's a lot of cool things you could incorporate into a game that probably if you work in a game studio, you would watch this, this stream and be like, oh, he, he knows nothing. <laughs> he knows nothing about the amount of work we put into games. Oh, no. And again, he's going out wide to Villiers. Yep, saw that all day long. Here they come. Oh, there's no one out here. Get back across the rim. Schoeman, I need you. <laughs> we need you to do one of your miraculous interception passes again. Oh, that's a nice little, uh, little pick and go there. Oh, can we get back for that one? Uh, Joshua, uh, I've got the mod uh, downloaded. Now let's go. Oh, awesome. Yeah, man. Hey, if, uh, if you uh, can get it all working and stuff. I've not particularly experienced in the world of uh, modding and modding games. I've only got a PC for the first time, I don't know, eight months ago, which is when I like started doing more of these streams and stuff because I can actually make it a bit more interesting. Um, but I I've been trying to learn a little bit about it. Um, uh, I've got okay. I, I kind of understand opening different zip files and <laughs> running the game through a .exe thing. <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. 
Oh, Hamish Watson getting an offload to Chris Harris. Here we go. 80th minute. Oh, pick it back up, Chris Harris. No, you've got to get there. I really think my light is going to, like, blow up in a second. <laughs> it's flashing at me, which it's never done before. If my face suddenly goes very dark, it is because uh, my light's just given out. I'll have to try and find an alternative light source. Or is it just going to be the bed highlighted in the uh, in the background? <laughs> oh, good tackle in the midfield. Come on, boys. We've got to get one more turnover. This is a drop goal opportunity. If we can get there. Can we do it? Finn Russell. What is drop goal in this game? B? Why? B? Why? Why? Yes, it's why. <laughs> we managed to take it right at the end. Finn Russell with a beautiful drop goal. Definitely looked like it was going to hit the post. We will take it, though. What was the score? 10-7? Anyone guess 10-7? <laughs> um, Oscar says, the under-20s for Ireland are class. Yeah, seemingly, if they've uh, they got their grand slam. I really, I didn't catch any of the, the under-20s. I, I really try and find time. I really have quite a limited amount of, like, free time. <laughs> it sounds kind of mad, because I don't feel like you upload a video, like, every day. It's like, but that is all my free time. Um... When it comes down to like the Six Nations stuff, I really like carve out a uh, a chunk of time to watch the Six Nations. Like I have to go out of my way and then make a video and stuff around it. Um, so a couple of people have asked like to do like coverage on like, oh, you should cover the under twenties, you should cover the women's Six Nations. It's like everything I put off to be able to sit down and watch all the Six Nations games, I have to uh, I have to go and catch up then <laughs> at the uh, at the end of it. Right, let's move over here. Um, I was going to look at oh sorry the uh, the other screen is what I was going to look at. I was going to have a look for. Uh, the under twenties, uh, Six Nations, uh, under twenties results. Because I wanted to see how they actually got there. What we can do? Let me go. Uh... Okay, they don't have any shields uh, for some reason. Let me go. There we go. Oh, not another one. I want. Go. There we go. <laughs> Look at me, like I know what I'm doing. Okay, well the chat box has disappeared. We were we were kind of close, right? Can I get that back? No. <laughs> okay, you guys can't see chat for the second. Um, so Italy, Italy lost by one point to France under twenty. Hey, that's a good game for them. Um, Wales under twenty lost to Ireland. 44 to 27. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a decent win for, for Ireland there. Uh, England under 20s just about pipped the Scotland under 20s. That's cool. Uh, England under 20s beats Italy. Uh, so Italy nil from two so far. Scotland, oh, just pipped Wales under 20s there. 18 17. And Ireland, France, 33 31. Bet that was a good game to watch. 33-31. So Ireland, across the board, look like they are scoring a lot of points. One of the things I had for my um, my prediction video was that um, I had Ireland to only get one bonus point. I really didn't expect Ireland to score as much as they did. Uh, but it looks like even the under-20s are, are scoring a lot in uh, in their games as well. Italy, uh, under-20, 27. Ireland, 44. Um so Ireland just dominating that one as well. Wales lost to England in the under twenties as well. No, oh, well, so we went we went zero from two in that fixture this year. Uh, France beat Scotland fifty four twelve. That's a big game. Um, oh, my thing doesn't go that far. Hang on. <laughs> the way I had it said it, it doesn't it doesn't scroll down to the bottom. Oh no, window capture this thing. Yeah, no, yes, this thing. There we go. Whoa, look at this. Technical. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, right, what are we doing? Uh, Scotland. God almighty, what happened to that Scotland Island game? 82 points to seven. D did Scotland have 10 men? 82 7. That seems outrageous. Uh, Italy beat Wales. Oh, Italy beat Wales as well. Oh my God, everyone beat Wales. <laughs> um. France beat England 42-7. Wow, so they had a, a pretty similar game to uh, to how it went over in Twickenham as well. Uh, Scotland lost to uh, to Italy as well. So Italy under 20s are doing okay then, yeah? They, they got a couple of good scores in this uh, this tournament. And then Ireland beat England 36-24. And France uh, also beat Wales. What else is new by this point reading through these? So, um, wow. So, yeah, Ireland doing very well. Italy had some good results though, right? 
They beat Scotland by 20-odd points. They beat Wales. They lost to Ireland, but everyone lost to Ireland. They were seven down against England uh, and lost to France by one. Are Italy up and coming? That's kind of interesting. Hey, look, chat's back. <laughs> it works on this screen. I don't know why it doesn't work on the other screen. I don't know enough about stream stuff to uh, to fix things. Um, uh, where, where was I with the chat here? Catching up. There we go. Uh, hi, I hope Lake will be fit for the World Cup. Uh, who do you support regionally? Uh, yeah, I hope Dewey Lake's good for the, for the World Cup. Dewey Lake, for me at the minute, has got to be the, the number one choice for Hooker. Ken Owens is, is, is really struggling. He, he got better as the Six Nations went on, but the line-out situation, not great. I do like Dewey Lake. I hope he gets back in. Um, in terms of, like, regionally, uh, I was always a big uh, Osprey supporter, uh, but Osprey's like no longer maybe Ospreys. There's something to do with them and Ealing, right? I have I to ask, I haven't caught club level rugby for so long. It's just time. It's just time. Um I have no idea how people manage to catch every game in the in the URC on a weekend. Like <laughs> there's so many games. There's so many games to uh, to keep track of. Um I just don't have the time to catch up with them. So I haven't caught Ospreys for a good while. Um some of my friends sport um Scarlet, so we used to go and watch the the Ospreys Scarlet's games quite a lot when when that was going on. Uh, we used to go down on Judgment Day a lot. Judgment Day is a great day out. I uh, haven't done that for four or five years now, though. So, yeah, club level's slipping away from me a little bit, uh, which is why the channel's so focused around international, which is why it always makes me chuckle when I get comments from people like, do you even watch the, the club level? This guy's amazing. It's like, no, I don't. <laughs> but you own a rugby channel. How do you not know watch the guy? I, yeah, I don't have time. There's lots of stuff going on. I have things in my life <laughs> to do. I can't watch every game of rugby that's on. Um... Captain Lewis says, uh, the Women's Six Nations is this weekend. Is it actually? Let me uh, have a quick look. I actually have no idea when it was starting. Uh, Women's Six Nations. I did catch a couple of games um, last year, just sort of passively as I was as I was watching it. Um, and it looked like Ireland, uh, Ireland, it looked like England and France were like the two real standout ones. Uh, 25th of March. That is this Saturday. Uh, so yeah, Wales, Ireland. Because Wales stepped up right for the Women's Six Nations or the women, Wales, for the Wales Women's International Team, they stepped up. I remember seeing last Six Nations, they had a really like good performance. They actually had a bit of backing behind them. Um, but some of the the Irish players, there was a uh, a girl. Was she playing fullback? Uh, it, oh God, her name was uh, like a type of toothpaste. <laughs> That's how I remember. It. Was it Considine, the Irish fullback? So it made me think of Sensodyne. <laughs> I, I just thought that's a really cool name. Um, but she she was absolutely on it. Um, she she looked really good. I can't say I know a lot about it, which is one of the reasons I don't cover it on the channel. It's not because I have no interest. I actually quite enjoy watching it. I just don't have any knowledge base. Me doing the preview videos would just be me reading the players' names out and going, I'll, I'll see how they get on, because I don't know enough about it, but uh, trying to find time. What time's actually on then? Oh, it's, it's also all on, on like iPlayer, is it? It's on BBC iPlay of like loads of the games. Oh, the Wales Island one might be on like a. I can't tell what that is on my on my screen. Oh, it's on BBC Cymru Wales. Oh, so it actually might be a little bit televised. If it is televised, I might try and uh, see if I can catch some games. Um, but yeah, I imagine uh, I think England or France are still the the two big standouts, right? For um, for, for the women's league. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Chat. <laughs> This is one of my problems, guys. For anyone new to uh, to the the world of me streaming, uh, I talk for ages about stuff, <laughs> and then I get very behind on the uh, the chat. Uh, you really need to have a go at Ruby 08 since you like Ruby 2011 so much. Uh, believe it's the last Ruby game to have the full Six Nations licenses. We make a really fun stream. Can you get it on 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 PC? Is there a way? I assume there's some sort of port. I do really want to get. Um, World Cup 2011 on PC because I think that would be a great laugh but I know Rugby 2011 used the the makeup of Rugby 08 to make that game uh, so I imagine I really would enjoy Rugby 08 um, with some some old names now uh, from back in the day it's, what's that like a 15 year old game is it now? quick maths yeah 15 year old game there are probably be a bunch of players I don't even know half their names uh, but I bet I probably would, uh, would really would really enjoy it um Ruby Island News says, uh, do you have a Discord server? I do not. I do not have, know how Discord works. Um, I did a, a chat. There's a video on the, the channel I did with um, Canada's Rugby. Um, and we use Discord for that. And 
Like that that took me ages to work out. I'm I I'm 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 not very old, but tech savvy wise, the world is escaping me very quickly. I can I've just about managed to get the whole streaming thing working. Uh, yeah, Discord servers and stuff. It's like all the uh, all the different social media. Like I've got it all all up, like above me here. Like it's like go subscribe here. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. Now I do actually put stuff out on Twitter. I do put a lot of uh, little posts and stuff out on Twitter because it's very easy. It links up with YouTube very well. I also have there <laughs> an Instagram. Now I I have I have an Instagram. <laughs> there is. I think three things on it, and it's been active for like 18 months. I suck at anything like social media based. I just, I just don't know enough about it. It's not on my mind enough. Um, I know a lot of people like Discord servers and chat and stuff. One thing I did actually quite like about the Super Brew, uh, the Super Brew uh, League had like a little chat for everyone involved in the Super Brew. You could actually chat. I didn't find it till like week three. There's a little community bit. It's like, oh man, I, I want to use that a bit more. I have tried using the. Um, the YouTube community pages a bit more. It's just a way to put out pictures, put out thoughts on games, put up some polls and stuff. And that's really fun. I really enjoy interacting with people. Um, I need to get like a, I need like a social media manager <laughs> who will work for free. Anyone want to do that job? <laughs> um, do you play rugby? I used to play rugby. I don't anymore. Uh, I, I realized uh, that uh, people are all about six foot eight and I, I can't cope with it. No, I, I uh, used to play scrum half. Um, I played sevens in university, uh, which was fun, uh, until you play people who can actually play sevens, and then it's not very fun. People, people wipe the floor with us. <laughs> uh, when I was playing sevens in university, we played the, um, the professional Cardiff sevens team, um, and they demolished us. They absolutely ransacked us. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were all like 20 years old we'd like had a few beers before we started playing and we played the Cardiff professional sevens team they're all about 28 grown men <laughs> who work very hard at their game and we lost by about 20 tries we got absolutely hammered um and they didn't let up they weren't like oh we scored 18 now let's see if they can do something they they just kept going they kept going <laughs> so uh yeah did a little bit of sevens but uh not to uh, not to any sort of high extent uh, I'm much more built for, for talking about rugby rather than uh, than playing rugby. Um, will Wales have any new players joining before the World Cup? I'm still wondering where a lot of the existing players are. Um, like Johnny Williams. I feel like we haven't spoken about Johnny Williams for a good while. Uh, a lot of people heading over to abroad now. Will Rollins moving away from, Ro uh, from Wales. Josh Adams moving away. There was a whole thing about the, the cap... The, they took it from like 60 caps down to like what was it 25 or 20 um, oh now like Corey Hill can come back and play for Wales it's like is he wanting to <laughs> does he care Hadley Parks can come back Hadley Parks must be like how old is Hadley Parks now 33 34 is he gonna come back and play does he care he's making good money let him let him play rugby out in Japan I've lost my chat again superb <laughs> um uh, I'm going to Judgment Day this year in April. Really excited for it. Yeah, Josh, the, the Judgment Day Judgment Day is such a good laugh. Um, the problem for me, I've always found, is I've got quite a big like group of friends that we used to go and watch Judgment Day with, and that group slowly grew bigger and bigger. It started out as like four of us. The last time I went to Judgment Day, there was like eight or nine of us. Um, and just trying to get eight or nine seats together is really hard. Uh, but the, the, the tickets are cheap. You get two games of rugby. Um, which is, you know, great fun. There's some good rivalry going on there. I also went and saw, um, what was the, the game? There was another one I went and saw that had two games. Oh, it was Wales versus the Barbarians. That was another one that I was, that was a really good price. That was like, that was like a 40 quid ticket. Wales versus the Barbarians. It was well, uh, Wayne Pivak's first game with Wales and Pivak was, was in charge of the, uh, the Barbarians. But before that game, you had the Wales women versus the Barbarians women. You get to watch two games for 40 quid. Awesome. Great. Why don't we do more like that? Six Nations tickets. <laughs> Suddenly they're like £400 a ticket. Got to pay £10 a beer. Not doing that. <laughs> I'll sit at home with my nice television and, and listen to some good commentary along the way. Um, what do you think of Rio Dyer? Do you think he's out of his depth? Yeah, we, we spoke about Rio Dyer a little bit ago. Um, I think Rio Dyer is doing well in terms of his attacking thing um i i have no idea off the top of my head if how he was doing in terms of meters made he must be um top for meters made the only person i could see exceeding him for meters made in that wales team would be zanit because of his 
interception try. I think in attack, Rio Dai is doing very well. Uh, but defensively, I just don't think he's quite got the... He's not quite ready for the, the physicality of international, I don't think. He's not a big guy. He's 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 not immensely tall. He's not immensely, like, built. Um, and just his general defensive reads, I don't think he's, he's, he's tackled quite well enough. There was a couple of times where he's one-on-one, -on -one, last man defending, and he's tackling people around, like, the bicep and shoulder areas. You know, wingers are big. You can't... You, you've got to take the knees and, and drop them, or you've got to just really commit and try and push them into touch like you can't you can't ride a tackle high because they'll just go through and score score a try but he's still young still low on caps a lot of way to uh, to progress as of yet so um it, you could argue out of his depth defensively uh but i think attack wise i think he, he he caused a bit of a stir for a couple of teams having to try and deal with him he's a bit of a wriggly player <laughs> he had his uh he had his 80th minute try in the in the last game as well i, I think in attack he, he's fine give him a bit of room bit of confidence helps when you don't have a teammate screaming at you and uh, knocking your own confidence, uh, I think trying to boost him, make him feel more confident, will be uh, be a really good uh, good way for him. Um, Joey Williams has just come back from injury, played his first game against Munster. Uh, Scarlet's lost to Munster away, 49-42. Oh, that sounds like a good game. Uh, he had a superb form and uh, was top of the URC charts uh, first half of the season. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, I, I rate Joey Williams highly. Um, he's one of those centers who just. He's willing to die, isn't he? <laughs> there's some players that just don't care about getting hurt, uh, and they're so dangerous for uh, for players to play against. Let me uh, swap back over to the uh, the game, and we'll uh, we'll keep on with this because uh, I talk for long enough. Um, but I really rate him as, as a centre. I think he's a really good twelve. Um, what's the name? Of the, who was the lad that played in the Six Nations? Um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head now. I've got Owen Williams. No, Owen Williams is fly half. Who was the who was the inside centre for for Wales? Um, the the played in this tournament. I can't think of what his name is now. Um, Joe Hawkins. There it is. My God, I couldn't I couldn't think of what that was at all. Um, he was he was he was doing okay. Um, he was he he was working hard in that centre department. I don't think the team necessarily gave him a lot to uh, to work with. Again, I'd not one I know from from club level a bit. People were really helpful down in the comments actually. Let me know that um, he can also play fly half, which is you know useful to uh, to have in a team to have you know an extra player who can just switch to fly half if you need him to um but i i still feel like i would rate um johnny williams higher than uh than joe hawkins at the minute in terms of, uh, of playing inside center oh can we get across he's tackle he's in tackle um also, what do you think of the freddie stewart red card against Ireland? yes uh, we, uh, we we spoke about that earlier on it got uh, it got mitigated down uh, and I think rightly so. I I I thought it was was quite harsh in game, um, which a lot of people disagreed with me on. <laughs> in the uh, in the review video, they were all saying, you know, this is the most clear cut red card I have ever seen of any game ever. As I I I think there was a lot of uh, of nuance around that one. Uh, we had a little talk a little bit. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go back and have a look towards the start of the stream, I came up with my uh, my three card initiative of the way to uh, to change the ruling in rugby. They need to add a third card, an orange card, that acts as the twenty minute red card for uh, an incident that happened that in that you know warrants a red card, but the officials think wasn't done with malice or intent but it fits the guidelines and therefore you could have a third card uh, and then someone dropped in the chat saying they already do this in in a different league so i had this uh, revolutionary idea that i was about to make millions of pounds off in uh, when i give it to world rugby and uh, apparently they already thought of it uh, they just don't do it yet over here in the uh, the northern hemisphere oh do i'm under murder got to get there but yeah no i what, what not a red card for me I, 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 maybe a penalty. I would have been like happy to see it as a penalty. One of the saddest things for me was the fact that Hugo Keenan actually had to go off from it because uh, I thought Hugo Keenan had such a good tournament. I was really looking forward to see him just sort of carry that on right through to the end. Uh, oh, Carl Stain, here we go, here we go, and again. Nope, can't get there. Um, but yeah, I, I would have been happy if that would have been given as, as a penalty. Um, I don't think England were going to win that game, but it certainly. It certainly gave them a knock to to not really help them in any way to to see that one out either as well. So I would have liked to have seen that given as a penalty, but uh, there's plenty of uh, <laughs> plenty of Irish fans that I'm sure would have been pretty annoyed had that just been given as a uh, as a penalty, not uh, not a red card. Uh, Kean's back, back. Well done, Kean. Thank you for coming back, mate. Thank you for being in the chat. So many people in the chat today, really as well. This is awesome. I'm glad so many people have come out for the uh, for the stream today. 
This is so much fun. Uh, who do you think the best player in the world playing? Wow, Oscar with the uh, with the easy questions today. <laughs> uh, the best player in the world. Uh, oh man, it, it, it's such it's such a hard question when you've got like. In what regard? You know, you could, you could pick an amazing attacker who might not be as better as some other people in defence. Um, best player in the world. Who is the best player in the world? Well, your brain says it has to come from an island side, right? Um, oh man, I don't I don't know how you, I don't know how you pick the best the best player <laughs> the best player in the world. Um, I think the most impressive player. Uh, for me is uh, Geordie Barrett um, in terms of being impressive. The fact that he can play four positions five positions like equally well uh, without skipping a beat um, at a high international standard uh, I think is incredible. Um, Josh van der Fleer is, is a bit of an animal and he like you know he just he's so good at carrying the ball he's amazing defensively. Um, the but, you know, we also got to see him play throwing in lineouts, just doing everything. DuPont's an exciting player. I have no idea. Who, the best player in the world. That's such a massive question. <laughs> um, I haven't seen Jordy Barrett play for a while, to be fair. He might, he might have dropped off. Um, I don't know. Who do you guys think is the best, the best player in the world? Who do you guys think? I'm looking forward to seeing some other people's answers. I'll stick. I'll stick with Geordie Barrett for now, until I get to see him play in the rugby championship. If he suddenly dropped off, <laughs> I'll change that answer. Um, oh my god, people! Oh my god, the, the chat goes so quickly. I'm not used to this many people. <laughs> Are people with two and a half thousand subscribers going to have like one person watching a live stream? There's so many people watching. Uh, uh, Tom Lewis says hi. Hello, Tom. How are you doing this fine evening? Um, I thought he was uh, brilliant against Munster. Back to uh, Johnny Williams, considering his return. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see Johnny Williams back in the uh, the Wales team. Sam says Dupont is the uh, the best player. Yeah, a lot of people would agree with you uh, in that regard. I think he's that tackle on Mac Hansen, right? That's uh, that's people have said he deserves Player of the Tournament um, because of that tackle. Singularly, forget anything else. That one tackle on Mac Hansen, um, I think it was absolutely just brilliant. <laughs> Dupont is amazing, though. He. Um, Tom says rugby twenty five. Come on, you uh, ready? Oh, we got a uh, thing coming in. Nick C I double X has subscribed. Thank you, Nick C I double X. I'm sure that's a Roman numeral. I can't do Roman numerals in my head that fast. Uh, I assume you mean rugby twenty four, Tom. But yeah, absolutely. R really looking forward to uh, to seeing a new rugby game come out later this year. We'll be doing so much coverage. I'm really looking forward to doing streams on it. I'm so annoyed it comes out just before the World Cup. Why? <laughs> I don't get to make the most of it. Before that World Cup comes out. I don't even get to like do the World Cup games on the game because it's so close. It's hard to uh, to like get out in one time. Um, John says the, the only problem with this rugby game is it always looks like the game is being played at 7.30 a.m. Yeah, I mean, you can change the the um, the, the the time, but playing it at night time. God, this game looks very struggling. Playing it at night time on the Xbox is... Is, is something else. It should win an award for how to fail at <laughs> games at night time. When, uh, when they play the game at night time, it's like someone has dropped the brightness and then just really increased the exposure. There's no, like, attempt at lighting at all. The, uh, oh, what a lovely pass to Kyle Stain. Run that one over, boy. All the way. And the post. All day long. Sorry, I did forget to ask for um, scoreline predictions as well for this one. But we're already on probably 14 so <laughs> take that into account um but yeah the daytime is fine we could change it to daytime in the in the rain that mixes it up a bit but yeah i know what you mean i would like i would like some more event things i also remember right when this game first came out so anyone else remember you can go back and watch my first ever video of this game the players tackling on the ground caused loads of like mud patches to appear on the grass which I thought was really nice, like an environmental thing happening to the ground. That doesn't happen anymore. It's not there. <laughs> I think at some point they were struggling with the performance. I remember one of the uh, one of the updates being for like the PS5. 
they had to like downgrade some of the performance because the game was struggling and it's not a big game um and i think they got rid of that because i've not really noticed that since my my first sort of opening game um oh oh don't do that what are you doing oh well that's a try for them i was trying to read chat didn't look at my uh, my own pass uh, Tom says, let's hope for a Six Nations added. Absolutely, man. I, I really hope they get the Six Nations. Or if not a Six Nations, tournament creator. Solve everything. Player, make a new tournament. What do you want your new tournament to be called? I want it to be called this. How many teams take part in the tournament? Six. Which teams would you like to take part in the tournament? One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Who do you want to play as? Play the Six Nations. Do you want to share this tournament online with other players? Yes, I do. Everyone downloads the Six Nations. Away you go. Simple. You don't need a license. It's a community-made tournament that's just the Six Nations. Easy. Make it happen. Um, uh, uh. <laughs> Trying to reach out at the same time. How did the ball get over there? Did that just teleport then? I wasn't paying attention. Right, what are we? 7 14 7. Okay, we're still we're still okay. Right, two on Van den Berver. Here we go. Cheeky little up and under. Let's see if we can get the uh, the kick chase here. Oh, Hugh Jones, good catch. To Scuban. He's been everywhere this tournament for us. No, get in, get in. Okay, here we go. Cheeky run here. Finn Russell. And again, offload. Jamie Ritchie. It's the gap. Drop Finn Russell back here. Hit the post. Just like we planned. <laughs> because now we've gained multiple meters. They also need to add a charge down feature in for, for kicking that's actually better than in this game. The charge down in players is so delayed. It's so hard to actually get a charge down. Oh, go on. Finn Russell, get that out. Do I'm under Merva all the way. Chris Harris on his inside as well. Yes, I saw that tackle coming. Planned it out. Good run. Good try for uh, Chris Harris there. Um... Uh, Thomas, uh, you've got PS5. I do not have a PS5. I have an Xbox uh, One X. Yes, I don't have the Series X. <laughs> I have no money. I can't buy the uh, the next gen, but I'm playing this on uh, on PC today. And uh, yes, I am okay. Thank you for, uh, for asking, Tom. Um, I'm sorry to say, uh, as an Irishman, I disagree uh, with the card. As in, you disagree with it, the, it being a red card, I assume you mean. Or you disagree with me saying it shouldn't have been a card. <laughs> Uh, who is making uh, Rugby 25? Oh, who's making Rugby 24? I assume you mean Tom. Uh, Big Ant Studios have taken over for Rugby 24 uh, with Knack on. So really looking forward to see what they can um, they can do with the uh, with with the game that is. I don't know. What would we say? Seventy percent like there. <laughs> they just refuse to finish it off, but it can be done. I still enjoy Rugby 2011. Twelve years on. Somebody has to be able to make a game that does the same same thing. Right, England have to run it here. We've pinned them back in their own 22. Do we just kick it out here? Or do we run? We'll do a Stuart Hogg. We will run and only run. <laughs> Kyle Stain. Oh, lots of room on the wing as well. Freddie Stewart's got a lot to do to get back for that. Oh, fair play to him. That's a good cover tackle. And then he ran into touch. Well, I mean, that's not going to help you win. we will take that one. We beat England. 21 points to 7. Who guessed 21 points to 7? Um, so, I've got that one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, Captain Lewis says you can play four-ish positions. You can play uh, hooker, fullback, flanker, and eight. That is a, a wild variety of positions. You can play... Oh, we won. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I thought we had one game left. Hey, there we are. We won the we won the Six Nations, guys. Everyone proud of me? <laughs> Another thing we need to add for E24. Something better than this screen. Don't give me a text box to tell me that I won. I know I won. I want to see an animation. I want to see people lift the trophies. If I win the Triple Crown, I want to see me lift the Triple Crown. I want rewards. Um... You can play. How, do, how does how do you play hooker, fullback, hooker and fullback? That feels like such a wide variety of positions. I love that. Uh, but fullback not very well. Ah, to be fair, you've you've, you've also uh, <laughs> bracketed that. Fair play to you. 
Yeah, I, uh, I I couldn't play fullback. There's too much going on. Too much going on trying to cover a backfield. Too much space for me. Playing sevens is tough enough. There's, too, there's so much room. <laughs> I don't know how to cover it all. Um, have you spoke about the Willis yellow card? I haven't. Um, oh, I, I don't even know what my own view on the Jack Willis yellow card is. Um, I don't think the... Um, I don't think he was helped by the uh, oh <laughs> the joys of mods. You, know, you don't get to see who won. Uh, do we get to look back at that at all? Or not? Can we have a look at how the final results stood or not? No. <laughs> all right, then. We won. That's all that matters. We got the Grand Slam. Who cares? Who cares what else happened? Um, what was I saying, then? Oh, the Willis Yell card. Um... Yeah, he wasn't helped by the fact that another player also got in the way. Um, I think any tip tackle though is 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 you, you you're all you're already in trouble, right? For the yellow card, there was another tip tackle though earlier on, wasn't there? Who who was the other tip tackle? Was it Justin Tipperick? Did a tip tackle on someone? Oh, there was another one on the weekend as well. One of them didn't get yellow card, and Jack Willis did get yellow carded. Um, I don't know a lot of the rules around mitigation on yellow cards. I feel like yellow card... As soon as you do a tip tackle, I feel like you end up getting getting yellow carded. Um, but he certainly wasn't helped by... the. There was a second player underneath the legs which helped him. Um, I did think he put him down a bit, though, rather than, like, driving him, which is why he didn't get a red card. But if you... Uh, if, if you ever pick up a player, you're in you're in desperate trouble before you even get... I don't know why I'm just sat on the screen, by the way. I'll probably swap back to this. Just... <laughs> Just stare, staring at Dupont, giving Aaron Smith a lovely hug, because we're all we all love each other in rugby, really. Um, you hope the crowd is better, Tom. What in uh, in the game is in like the do cheering or do something? Um, I kind of like they added like the flags and stuff. Flags and stuff is cool. There's a lot of just extra stuff you can add in the game, right? Why? Well, imagine like imagine a game that would finally do something like um, like you know like a like a pitch invader. <laughs> 80th minute, right on the try line. Pitch Invader runs on the field, ruins the game. Security have to escort him off. <laughs> Audience interaction as a setting. That'd be fun. <laughs> Completely ruin your game. Um, should be good if Rugby 24 is on the PS5. Yeah, um, the um, I, I think... Did I just read that out correctly? P Rugby 24 is on the PS5. I can't remember if I just read that out correctly. Yeah, it's coming out on, on most of the... I'm very surprised it's coming out on... Last gen is it? Is it last gen now? Consoles. Um, I really thought they'd be moving it on to next gen. Rugby Twenty Two is is a rough game on on the Xbox One X, which at one point was like the best, um, you know, device ever made for for game consoles and stuff. And it, it doesn't run brilliantly on that. So the fact they're doing another new game, which would be even bigger, probably a lot more textures for, for them to go with. I'm surprised they're 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 keeping it with that one. But yeah, looking forward to see them on uh, on things like the the Series X and stuff. But uh, the joy of a PC now, I can play it. I can actually play it well. Um, when the game comes out, I'll probably be doing... Um, I don't even know. I might record it in 2K and then compress it down to 1080p for, for YouTube's sake because like, 2K videos are way too big. Um, but sometimes I feel like I don't do this game enough credit. Like the, 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 the footage you're watching today on this stream, um, I've gone back and watched my own streams and the gameplay doesn't always look the best. I have like a 4K monitor that I play on, uh, but the stream, just for the sake of <laughs> not crashing every 10 seconds, is, is running at 1080p. I, I think I can get away with 2K, um, but I don't think the game is enhanced that much by it, um, like on a 2K stream compared to a 1080p stream. But 4K actually looks, looks pretty good. Um, Villa Farrell's in the chat. Hi, MD and crew. Hello, Villa Farrell. Congratulations on your uh, prediction win, man. That was uh, very well done. His uh, first entry ever into the Super Brew League in the uh, predictor and won. <laughs> I've I've still never got into like the top three. I just suck at being able to uh, predict games, apparently. And I didn't manage to win the fantasy. It still haunts me. It still haunts me. I don't actually know who Etai is. It's one thing that is the only issue with doing Super Brew to YouTube. I don't always know who is who because people have different pseudonyms between Subaru and, and YouTube. So I don't know who Etai is, um, but I'm, 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 it still haunts me. <laughs> I won't get over it for another year. I don't mind losing, but I don't like losing when I know I could have won. That infuriates me. <laughs> so that will uh, that will live with me. Um, 
Uh, Oscar says, yeah, the red was way too harsh. Oh, that's good. It's nice to hear. Uh, yeah, I've, I've read some other Irish supporters who, uh, you know, he should be banned for six months. Like, like no, just because it's against your team. Don't don't think like that. Think rugby, rugby logistics. I think it's a harsh red card. I'm more than happy to to agree to red cards, the yeah, cards. It's one of the reasons a lot of people like uh, always enjoyed the review videos because I, I just gave like an honest opinion about it. But so many people got annoyed. People were not happy. What was the other one that I had? Um, the Antonio tackle. Uh, I can't remember who it was on. Was it Kelleher? Someone from Ireland. Uh, people were not happy. <laughs> I was like, like, great shot. They were like, it's a red card. You can't say that. I was like, oh, I, I, <laughs> I thought I thought it was a good hit. Like at the time of watching it, looking back at it, all right, yeah, it's 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 not the best tackle in the world, but it was a good shot. <laughs> people got real annoyed at that one. Um. Uh, Josh says you're proud of me for winning the Six Nations. Thank you, thank you, Josh. I'm so glad, mate. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm still getting a bit too good at this game. I feel I didn't. Did I even concede that many points? That I'd like to go back and look at the stats for that because I actually don't know how many points I uh, I conceded. Um. Oh, Oscar, you play flanker as well. A lot of, lot of flankers. I've got a uh, I've got a, a subscriber base of people who play back row. Have I. Uh, you probably all hated me. I was the scrum half that uh, waited for you to do all the work. <laughs> and then when you won a penalty scrum, I was like, yeah, as a team, we did that. <laughs> I was the one that got the ball in late in the scrum. <laughs> um, Tom says, uh, anthems should be added to Rugby 24. Yeah, I like anthems. I don't know what the license is around anthems because it's songs. I don't know how that, that works. Stadiums and anthems, I think would be cool. Watching... If you have good character models, right? One thing Rugby 22 did well was having the, the France and New Zealand character models look really good. I think it'd be really cool to have intros to games similarly to we see them in the in real life. Have the players, the character models, stand and do like national anthems while you're doing like the team sheets and stuff. New Zealand, uh, Fiji, do some hackers. Get the character models to do hackers, right? Why not? I think that'd be great. Have like an intro. It'd make my videos much more fun, like to, to build up for, for stuff like watching the hacker and stuff. I think it'd be cool. Um, Captain Lou says, I personally prefer uh, the forwards and the backs if I have to be honest. Uh, Watch us generally. <laughs> <laughs> they, they work hard, the forwards, believe me. I, uh, there's plenty of forwards that I play with that if you have a winger, doesn't even have a, a blade of dirt on their, uh, on their shirt by the end of the game. <laughs> the forwards, head to toe, worked hard all game. Meanwhile, the winger scored three tries, got man of the match. <laughs> That's what I always used to remember from uh, from conversation. Enzo says, yo, hello, Enzo. How are you doing this fine evening? Um, Tom says, fighting, be good. You're not fighting. <laughs> so like the, uh, is it the NHL games? Like the hockey ones? You can like cause a fight. I think that'll be fun. Something I actually really enjoyed, right? And I know it's a bit against the, the values of, of rugby and stuff, right? In rugby 2011, you could cheat. There was a button to cheat, but it was broken, which is a real shame. You could collapse malls and scrums um, with clicking down the analog stick. So if a driving mall's going over your try line, you're like, I can't stop it. It's going to be a try. You can collapse it. Um, but the button was a little bit broken that it meant that whenever you used it, you got a penalty in like a yellow card. So you could stop the try, but you got penalized really heavily for it. I would kind of like the idea that you could actually add in cheat button that worked like maybe the referee is on the pitch and as the referee goes like around the mall if you collapsed it at the right time it would collapse and maybe like 50% of the time the referee didn't give it as a penalty and then that way you're like oh can I get away with it do I chance it but if you get it wrong maybe it's a penalty try and a yellow card you know maybe, maybe you get much more serious I would also like a TMO I think a TMO would be cool right have, have, if you scored a try, but like your player got tackled over the try line and they're like reaching for the ball and the players both landed together, have it built into the game a little bit so that um, it, it then like went to like a TV screen and showed like a close up image of the, of the try being scored and like the game would determine in the background whether or not you scored a try. Um, I think that could be, I think that'd be great fun. <laughs> Like, out of an attention. Is, was it a try? I don't know. I don't know. I want to go back and have a look at it. That'd be great. Um, Enzo says, uh, do you reckon I should buy this game? I'm contemplating buying it. Uh, if you go into... If you're getting it on PC, Enzo, 
Um, I believe it's actually in the Steam sale at the minute. It's like eight quid. For eight pound, you could play this game for six months and probably really enjoy it. Um, there are some mods you can download to finish out the, the rest of the teams and stuff. I would pick this game up over Rugby 20 if you have the option of two. Um, you can always check out somewhere that like maybe slightly more off-brand digitally, uh, like CD keys or something they might have for cheaper. Uh, but I, I never tell people go and use sites that, that aren't like directly from source. But I think it is currently in the Steam sale. So if you can get it for cheap, uh, absolutely. Um, I, I, if you're playing it on console, I would see what you could do. Maybe go check out like a, a CEX or game where they maybe like a pre-owned version. 15, 20 quid or so in. That's probably fine, right? And it, you've still got a good six months before Rugby 24 comes out. You know, you, you could have a good amount of fun with it between now and then, I think. Uh, Tom says, any news on Rugby 24? Uh, no. Um, uh, we've had the we've had that lovely eight-second trailer. <laughs> That's about all you can do. I've got all my Google alerts set up for Rugby 24. Didn't know how many places uh, use the word Rugby 24. There is Rugby 24 Hour News. Rugby score lines that end in Rugby 24, uh, like 24 to nil. Uh, there's all sorts of different things. So there's quite a few, uh, I get quite a few notifications now. None of them have anything to do with the game. Uh, but I am checking it out interspersely on the uh, on the Twitter pages and stuff. They have actually updated the, um, the Rugby 22 Twitter page and Facebook page to now be about Rugby 24. Um, so they're sort of moving there. I didn't add that into the video that I did for it because I was like, does anyone care that they changed the artwork <laughs> of their, their profile picture? Don't know. Uh, Villa Farrell says, Etai is the international man of mystery. Yeah, who knows who Etai is? Um, it's probably some ludicrous, you know, uh, like WWE backstory where it'll come out. Etai was secretly my father all along he's been <laughs> and he's been beating me at the fantasy or something <laughs> it's all interlinked um oscar needs to go no worry oscar thank you for stopping by the stream mate um uh big work here asks uh, you play wales on legend oh yeah people have been asking sorry yeah someone did ask earlier on for uh, england versus wales didn't they yeah we, we can do a couple of uh, like request a game dealios uh, so someone asked for England versus Wales, and then Kean has now asked for Wales versus South Africa. So we can actually get to show off um, some of the modded teams, which is nice. I love Wales playing red. Um, I also want to swap over. This is the only... Oh, sorry. I've got three I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> what else is new? Hang on. Let me swap it over. Now, there we go. That's what it's meant to be. Um... This is the only thing that I've actually found wrong with this mod so far, is uh, Cal Sinclair and Alice Genji the wrong way around. Uh, if you go and watch the uh, the Mad Dragon Six Nations, you will see that <laughs> like when I'm playing against England, I can't change their team. Again, another thing they could add into Rugby 24, change the team management of the team you're going to be playing against to create a team. Uh, that's something I really wish there was, because uh, like trying to do some of the videos on my end, it's like, oh, now we're playing France, but the France team in this game has like Vaca Tower, Villiers, yeah, a lot of people that just aren't playing for the France team at the minute, and you can't change your opponent's team, so you, you get forced to play against them. It makes the commentary a bit more difficult on my end to keep track of everyone. Um, but that is pretty much the only uh, the only thing I've found wrong with it. Um, he'll start off. Let's go to a, a random city. In fact, you know what? Let's, uh, let's change the... Someone was talking about the uh, the daytime thing, right? Let's play a rainy day. Let's mix it up. Let's see how dark the screen is. Um, yeah, we can do Wales, South Africa after this on Legend. Wait, I, I pretty much exclusively play on Legend difficulty now. Um, I feel like I would I would dominate a little bit too much in the uh, in the in the pro anymore. Um, uh, oh, I lost my chat again. Click off. Click on. Uh, I think it's be in Rugby Twenty Four. Uh, how often do you get sent off in Rugby Twenty Two? I have never had a red card in Rugby Twenty Two. Uh, you can get yellow cards for doing your stick tackle incorrectly, uh, but I've never seen a red card. Uh, someone did say in chat earlier on they have had a red card, but only due to two yellow cards. So there, I, so there must be one. I've never experienced it. Here we are. Rainy weather. Extra fun. Um, Tom says, uh, you find scrums the hardest. Scrums are... Scrums for me in this game are not very... Well, does that, well, they've come directly from Rugby 20, but I, I wasn't a big fan of the style of the scrums with the moving ball and stuff. Um, I don't really think they give a good 
picture of what what scrums are like. You know, this this it's a slow mini game where the the scrum moves backwards and fo oh, the toe jay just showing off the footwork there. Um, where you know it, it moves backwards and forwards, and sometimes you you lose like three stages of the scrum and then suddenly you drive them backwards the scrums don't do that i think they need to update the uh, the scrums a little bit the scrums aren't the best in uh, in this game but on ledger difficulty scrums are tough scrums are some hard things to uh, to compete against um oh you don't play it anymore time you stopped playing did you um yeah i can i can imagine a lot of people did the uh, the online community is not exactly busy these days I did mention before, um, I, I played some online uh, off-stream the other day, and the multiplayer handled really well. Um, I don't know if they did anything further with it, but it was pretty solid. Um, I don't think playing multiplayer on-stream helps the game in any way. Um, I think it actually makes... That's why... Remember, we've done a couple of online games before on streams, and um, it's just gone terribly wrong, or like... I remember there being one game... I remember... I can't remember who I was playing. Um... And it was like a France versus Australia game. And I couldn't win a ruck. <laughs> I don't know if anyone was here for that stream. It was like I physically couldn't win a ruck. If I took the ball in, didn't matter. They won the ruck. If they took the ball in, they won the ruck. It was like they were playing about a second ahead of me. Um, so every breakdown was over by the time it was even happening on my screen. And that's such a way to like ruin, a, a ruin a, an immersion in a game. Um, so... Playing it off stream did actually help it out a lot, and it felt a lot better. Or oh, after Johnny May here, oh, good tackle though. Who was that? Tipperick, doing well to get across with that one. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I did enjoy playing uh, multiplayer. I ended up playing like four or five games on multiplayer for the first time in a year, maybe. Um, when was that? That was about a month ago. Which is nice to see. We could play some uh, some online games today if anyone happens to. Uh, have the game installed on PC and you fancy testing <laughs> the limitations of this game while I'm streaming? Oh, come on, boys. Oh, Tipperick, what a run. No one's going to get there for that. Good good try. Um, can we see you playing Rugby 24 anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely will be uh, when it's out. Um, no one has reached out to me from the, from the guys over at Rugby 24. I don't think they tend to reach out to, I don't know, smaller YouTubers. I don't know why. I, I would be reaching out to anyone who would like play that game to try and build up, build up the hype for it. Um, I will be playing it on the day of release. Uh, I've actually, I mean, I've got the day booked off work and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on it when that game comes out. Um, we'll be playing, I'm going to play it in the day. I'll be making a bunch of videos. There'll be tons of videos coming out um, on the channel on the day going over the the menus the teams uh some actual gameplay from it so there'll be a bunch of videos coming out uh but what i did for rugby 22 is i then did a stream in the evening uh so there'll be a bunch of videos coming out on the channel on the day uh and then we will be streaming it in the evening so uh, if you're still on the fence about picking it up uh you can always wait till that day come check out the stream and uh see if it's a game you fancy uh, picking up you'll have my honest opinions it's one of the great joys of being a small YouTuber and people not giving you <laughs> game codes for free or, you know, sponsoring you to, to play their game. You get my honest opinion. Uh, if I don't like it, I'll tell you I don't like it. If it's great, I'll say it's great. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a rubbish uh, loose bouncing ball. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, to play it. I'm really We will be following it as well because uh, I did it for E22 and really enjoyed it. Um, and a lot of people... We're watching the videos on the channel, like, leading up to it. Announcement trailers, team trailers, gameplay trailers and stuff. Uh, and they were really fun videos to make. Uh, oh, my God. They, they have another breakthrough. What's going on with this England defense? Both teams playing all out attack today in the wet weather. Um, but I really enjoy just following the life cycle of a game like that. I like seeing it improve. I really hope, I really hope um, they do what they did for, for Rugby 20 and add in a... Um, a beta. I really hope they allow an early access beta if you like pre-order the game or something because I'll play the hell out of that. <laughs> that will be there. No idea what the rule is on streaming a game if it's in like beta. I assume it's fine on, on YouTube. I assume there's no weird things like that. Um, 
But I, I, I play in a beta is so much fun just to see how the game progresses. It's, it's why I feel like I still enjoy Rugby 20 more than Rugby 22. Because of the build-up to the game. Playing in a three-phase beta, being able to give some bug reports and feedback and seeing how the game developed over time and see what got better, what got worse. Like, I feel like a real sort of affiliation with that game, even though I just... I didn't even have the channel back then. I just I just followed it along myself and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I really hope they, they have the confidence in their own product to be like, we're going to do a beta. We want people to play our game. We want coverage on our game. We want videos on YouTube. We want streams. You know, draw some hype. Get people ready for it. If you're proud of your game and you, you believe it's a good game, I don't know why you wouldn't be like, yeah, have some early access. Let's get people playing it. Let's get people showcasing it. Rugby 22 didn't do it. <laughs> and if you saw the review, uh, <laughs> I gave him hell for it. Uh, uh, here's a scrum. We were talking about how poor scrums are. Welcome to legendary scrums, where you just don't get to win anything. Oh, we won one. There we are. That's about all you can do. We can get a cover tackle across here. Oh, good cover tackle there. Right, let's drop this back. I'm going to have to play a little bit more defensively than, uh, than usual, because I'm really struggling to do anything in this game. Um... Tom says, looking forward to see gameplay when it's out. Yeah, man, I've, uh, I'm going to really enjoy uh, getting into it. There's a couple of a couple of games I'm really looking forward to play uh, that are coming out, but I, I won't be putting on the channel. This channel has just, it's just become rugby now, which I, which I enjoy. Um, but there isn't really enough um, like rugby <laughs> game content to uh, to fulfill people's needs. I try and come up with some interesting stuff. That's why I came up with the, the, you know, the Mad Dragon Six Nations series. That was a really fun series to film. I had a great laugh. Uh, doing that. Oh, I couldn't quite get there. Um, across that. No, we can't. Um, yeah, I had a really good laugh filming that. Oh, oh no. End of the game. <laughs> I thought maybe I could have got there. Um, yeah, so I, I, if there's more games coming out, yeah, I'll be playing them. Um, I doubt with Rugby 24 coming out, we're going to be seeing a Rugby Challenge game coming out anytime soon. Um, I might pick one up if uh, if it comes up. As long as they change the camera angle. That's all I want. <laughs> I don't like playing behind players. That will be one of my biggest criticisms. If Rugby24 has it, so you have to play behind the uh, behind the player. I don't want to do that. You better give me a sideline camera. Uh, let's get some of these things off the go. Um, hope the menu is better in... Uh, in 24. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. The menu system. Yeah, I had plenty of critiques to give this, uh, this menu system. Oh, I've still got some missions to do, have I? Ah, oh, that one. Win five leagues, have I? Win five leagues, have I? Um, yeah, can be improved. Cleaner lines. Again, Ruby 20. I, I like the menu system. Clean. Good color scheme. Just squares. You know, fine. I don't mind the tackle player in this. Like DuPont getting a good shot on Aaron Smith. That's fine. I think it's a cool animation. Just... Could have shifted it up. Had some different players doing different tackles. It's all built into the game, right? You could have done it. And I also know this is this is actually not... Um, it's not like a picture or anything as well. Because on the Xbox, I once broke this game. Um, <laughs> and I got the camera that you guys see now. I accidentally got into a free cam mode. I don't know how. And uh, all this is like stationary. Like all the, all the, the options are all stationary in the sky but you can actually rotate the camera around the back and they are actually player models so they definitely could have done it they definitely could have incorporated that a little bit uh tom says catch you again pal look forward to ruby 24 hope the graphics are better and hope for a better ref yeah awesome man yeah i hope um hope it delivers everything that uh, that you want it to <laughs> um because uh, uh we've all got high hopes right we're all hoping for uh, for a good game from um ruby 22 of 24, sorry, compared to Rugby 22. If you see Wales improvement, uh, EPs, uh, oh, especially how hard they worked before France match, uh, I reckon Gatlin pushed them. Do you think we will see another massive improvement in the World Cup? I mean, they've got a big step up to do, right? Um, the pool, the pool stages are better for Wales compared to some of the other teams. Um, Oh, I'll say that Wales actually got quite a tough one on the in C. <laughs> I don't know. If they can get out of the pool stage, I think the biggest fear for me currently is the Fiji game. Um, 
Australia, I can see it going either way. Um, but I, I might even lean towards Australia winning that one. Georgia, they should beat. They just should. Uh, the last Wales-Georgia game was such a, an awkward game to watch. Um, Portugal. I don't know a lot about Portugal. I assume Wales beat Portugal at this point. No disrespect to Portugal. I look forward to seeing how they perform, but Wales should be beating Portugal. Fiji is the only one where I'm like, I'm not sure. I went to see Wales versus Fiji last autumn. The autumn before. Wow, that was a while ago. It was like 18 months ago now. Um, and they they struggled in that game. And uh, Fiji had a rare card in that game as well. And I remember watching that thinking, they're playing these guys in the World Cup. And I, I don't have a lot of faith. So I look forward to see how they get on. The only thing for me with Wales is the, the way their defence deals with um, just consistent pressure attack. It just seems to give in eventually. Like the... the as soon as the, the defensive line breaks and a player makes room, like other teams seem to scramble really well. They seem to, oh, someone made a, a good clean break, they're away, they get tackled five metres further on. Wales seem to lose like 40 metres to every broken line as soon as it happens. Um, and one of the biggest pressures they put on Wales is teams that just go one after another, after another, after another. Quick recycling of the ball and just keep slamming and you narrow the defence and you just keep going and going and going and eventually a hole opens up. And Fiji are great at it. Um, so I have to see how they get on. But I did like what Wales did um, for the Italy game and the France game with their own attack. How much quicker they were at just getting the ball out the back of the ruck Pick, go, bang, pick, go, bang, pick, go, bang. You know, people supporting them, picking and going, really pushing that offside line backwards, constantly pushing players back. I really like that style of attack. And I think it kind of suits Wales, actually. The way the players did it, it, it kind of worked well. So I'm looking forward to see what improvements they make towards the World Cup. But there's only like three games, I think, right, for Wales now before the World Cup. Not a lot of time. <laughs> Not a lot to make, uh, make uh, big improvements. Um, Tom says, uh, you play rugby? Yeah, we had a little bit of chat, uh, but I don't need more. Um, I used to play scrum half, and I played sevens in uh, in university. Um, which was uh, good for some games. <laughs> Not good after a few beers before you play. Uh, I've forgotten who you said, Kian. Did you say Wales, South Africa, I think, right? Where's Wales? Wales, South Africa. I will put them in the green, the old green kit. Um... We'll swap to a... Uh, what weather is this? I don't even know. Misty. <laughs> I don't actually know what weather we're playing in. It's going to be a surprise. We're going to find out. Um, I think we could beat uh, Australia and make it out of the first bracket. Yeah, Australia... I mean, we were going to beat Australia last year. And then we didn't. <laughs> so I never put it back, Australia. Eddie Jones now with Australia in terms of coaching. Knows what Wales are going to bring in terms of... Uh, although he's back now with, with Gatlin. Maybe they uh, maybe they mix that game up a bit. Um, I think Australia have got a very dangerous squad. I, 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 I think Australia might be one of the more underrated sides at the minute. Um, seeing how they got on last year, uh, they, they didn't have a great win rate. They, I think there was like, was it like 40%? They won like 40% of their games Australia last year, which is why the coach got sacked. Um, but they beat big teams uh, along the way. They should have beaten New Zealand in that one game that they had the uh, the time penalty for. And they're also missing uh, like a full starting 23-man squad. And they still played very well. And they still came back from a big deficit against Wales to win that game. I think once that... Uh, oh, look at this for a try. Oh, how nice and early for Wales. Here we go. Um, I still think when um, Australia get kitted back out, they have a big team again. I, I can see that being a ferocious team. Some of the players that seem to be popping up out of nowhere. What was the winger called? Um, no, uh, like Naisawa Nikita Wase. Where did that lad come from? <laughs> He's great. Um, suddenly it's like, oh, it, it no longer matters that they don't have Kari Betty because this kid's awesome. So uh, I think I think Wales will have a, a tough old time in that World Cup. Um, 
I, I, I almost want to say if, I, if they if they get I, it might not even be the worst thing to come second. I've got a feeling England might win their pool. Um, I've got this weird thought of like I think it would be better for Wales to play Argentina than play England in the World Cup. I don't know why I think that because Argentina are a good team. Um, Wales just seem to have a better record <laughs> against Argentina than some other teams. I was, I was like, you know what? If if Wales to play Argentina need to win the, the pool, then that becomes important. If Argentina beat England and win their pool, I don't necessarily mind Wales going second because I feel like that could that might work a bit better for them. Um, but uh, as Villa Farrell says, Wales may actually get further than Ireland because Ireland have got some uh, some tough ones. Oh man, can you imagine if Ireland go out in the pool stages after the year they're having? How brutal. Scotland turn up for that first, like, that first one. They're like, yeah, let's have it. Let's have this one. World number one team. Let's take them. <laughs> and then the Springboks join in. Oh man, that would be, that would be heartbreaking. Ireland have built towards having this team for so long. I remember doing the, um, the predictions video for the, uh, 2022 Six Nations. And I predicted an Ireland Grand Slam for that one. And so many people commented on that. Like, you think Ireland will get a Grand Slam? Like, you're out of your mind. It's like, Ireland have got a really good team. And then they won every game bar the France game, which is why France got their Grand Slam. But, like, it was by far their worst game. And they, like, oh, Josh Adams again. Oh, my God. What's going on with the South African team? Um, but... Also, like, they had the opportunity to, like, go for a win, and instead they kicked for three. It was like they, they just sort of threw that game away. Everyone was like, oh, Ireland never going to win in Six Nations. And it's like, well, oh, they won it this year. It's like, I was one year out. <laughs> They've built a team. They've built a damn good team. Um, Villa Farrell says, you hope Ireland take it. Yeah, I mean, if it, it, it would be nice for a Northern Hemisphere to take the, the World Cup, right? Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head... Once you go past like the quarterfinals, you then play the semi-finals from the other side of the the World Cup, right? Um, I don't know how the order will go. I don't know what the likelihood is of having like two Northern Hemisphere teams in the final. Um, isn't isn't the final like t like it does also line up that it could end up being like a France Island final, which would be mad. <laughs> I can't imagine a World Cup game being like a, a Six Nations game again. Oh, Jonathan Davis. Nice little pass to, uh, to George North here. Little kick. Oh, doesn't get the catch. Put him in touch. Absolutely fine. Um, we will play more games before the World Cup. Yeah, I don't think it's that... I can't remember how many it is. They'll play three for the for the summer tour in July. They won't have played the autumn tour, will they? I don't think so. I don't know what else they would play. Um, I don't actually know how many games Wales have got, unless they play four in the in the in the summer series. Um, I don't actually know how many games they've got left until that uh, until that World Cup. Or oh, maybe they got friendlies actually as well. I have no idea about friendly games. Um, but friendly games prior to a World Cup, I'm I would always be more fearful about like injuries. I should catch again having a friendly game. That's a friendly game against New Zealand. Oh, you've lost six players to injury. Great. <laughs> Um, Tom says you hope the uh, the Wales stadium is added yeah the stadium thing is absolutely something they need to add into games I, I think it's a misstep from, from the people who own the stadiums I feel like you'd want your, your stadium in a game especially like rugby 24 seems to be like it's going to be like a standalone the most modern rugby game wouldn't you want your team in that your stadium if you're going to have like a Six Nations included if you've got the World Cup, does that mean you get to have all the World Cup stadiums? Because it's like a, an official licensed World Cup thing. Maybe you'll have all the um, all the stadiums for the World Cup in. I can't actually remember the World Cup 2015 if that had official stadiums. Because I only spent five hours playing that game before I was like, this game is terrible. <laughs> and just abandoned it forever. Oh, Josh Adams again. Man, this has been a, a, a really weird game. South Africa are really highly rated on this game they've uh, they've not really performed so far Ken Owens on the crash ball Adam Beard George North Balata oh what an interception superb okay uh, there's me talking about how bad South Africa have been doing and then suddenly they <laughs> they've started opening up here maybe I should have just kicked the ball out 
There we go. Got in at half time. Um, Brian says Australia being uh, will be dark horse for it. I think uh, they've had a lot of injuries. Very nearly beat us Ireland in the autumn. Yeah, I I think Australia have got a little something up their sleeve, and I think in terms of the progression through as well. Um, like they should beat Portugal, they should beat Georgia. Um, I can't think of the last time I saw Australia play Fiji. I would have Australia's favourites for that. They absolutely have it to beat Wales, so they could come top of the, the table. If it goes the way that I sort of think it will and England win their group, that means Australia will go on to play Argentina um, in the quarters. They've, 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 they beat Argentina. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure where they what those next games are uh, off the top of my head but it's a it's a decent little old route for uh, for Australia if they can uh, if they turn up and have less injuries than they have this year the amount of injuries for Australia has been a little bit brutal i did read the uh, the injury list and it actually made up a team <laughs> which I, I just found amazing it's one of the reasons that i thought the um how was that my knock on that's outrageous it's one of the reasons i thought the um the, the fact that the coach got sacked. I thought that was so harsh. I was like, yeah, or he's like, oh, he only got 40% wins. And it's about the percentage wins. That's all we care about. So, yeah, but he's, he's had a lot to work with. And he's, like, blooded all these new, like, very talented-looking players. I, I, I think he could have built towards a really good World Cup. I'm sure Eddie Jones will have, you know, a good impact on the team, though. Um, I'm looking forward to see how he implements his style of, of, of rugby into it. One of the things I always think about Australia is sometimes they always they always narrow down a little bit and just start going like, are we just going to keep carrying through the forwards over and over and over again? I'm kind of hoping with Eddie Jones at the helm now for Australia, um, he improves the way... Oh, good charge down. Not let him get that drop goal. I don't know why you'd go for a drop goal at 21-0 down, but... <laughs> who asked in the chat earlier on about, about drop goals they do go for drop goals but uh, in the wrong instances there um, terrible kick Josh Adams um, but yeah I hope he improves the, the way Australia's defence works and if, if he like incorporates the, the England defence from a few years back where they just used to kick the ball back to the other team and then back their own defence and got breakdown penalties um, I think Australia have got enough mega units but uh, they could really punish teams. Oh, Reese Amit is away. They get on. Oh, terrible kick. And another kick. <laughs> we got there. We got there eventually. Had to go around the houses a bit. Um, Fiji looked good against us as well, albeit uh, against the second string. Yeah, I think uh, I think Fiji will look um, look for this one this year. They'll be a bit annoyed from the last World Cup with the, uh, the Uruguay loss. Um, Fiji are, are one of those teams that I've just... They've never quite you feel like they should be not quite tier one but like fully competing against because they're just units aren't they <laughs> every player that plays for fiji is just just an absolute unit you feel like they could just dominate teams uh and they do of course in like the world of sevens and stuff they they absolutely go go wild um you really feel like all they need is they just need a bit of money behind them some better coaches and uh, and boom, th those lads suddenly start surging up. Oh, who got injured? Reece Zam is, huh? When did he pick up an injury? Oh, big ass to make a tackle there on uh, Mpimpi. Not going to happen a lot of times there. Oh, good interception, though. Jonathan Davis. Can't take it any further. Oh, poor tackle there. It's a ball. It's a ball. Um, uh... Uh, there it says, uh, I'm up for it if you want to try an online game, though. Uh, I'm in Australia, though. 8.30 a.m. Uh, having a breaky. Uh, so the connection might... <laughs> hey, we can have a go, man. If you're, uh, if you're still up for it, we'll, uh, I'll finish this game and I can search one. Uh, it might be difficult to find each other is the only thing. Uh, well, so I have no idea how many people are really playing this game online. Uh, but if you uh, feel free to get the game loaded up now and let me know when you're sort of ready. And we will try and coordinate <laughs> our best we can uh one of the joys of this game is because it's so sort of broken anyway at different intervals um sometimes it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how bad the connection is but uh, hey i have never played a game against anyone from uh, from australia so hey there's a new experience for me well as look at this guy look at this tank just walking through tackles somehow we defended that 
Take down there. Yes, there we go. Good defense again. I'm quite happy with how my defense has been today. Um, I've only conceded like 10 points over the whole stream. That's pretty good for me, right? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm normally much worse. 28-0. 28-0. Uh, is this uh, legendary called Deep King? Yes, absolutely it is. Uh, I, I play that. I don't think the mod that I play with now has, uh, has necessarily helped my um, the, the difficulty I play on. Because the mod the mod that I have now for this game, I think uses a slightly older patch of the game. Um, so there's a few more things that seem to go wrong. Like the ball doesn't get caught or players drop the ball a bit more. Uh, but it is 100%. I'll, uh, just so I'm not actually lying. There you go. <laughs> there it is. It's down here. Legend. I just play pretty much exclusively on Legend. Uh, but I think the patch that it runs on, the, um, the the Legend team, they're still difficult to play against. Like, the scrums are impossible. They still cheat at, like, lineouts and stuff. Uh, but they make a few more mistakes than I'm used to. So when I used to play Legend on the game... Like, official release, standard game. Games would normally end, like, 5-0, 3-0, 5-7. Like, they were really tight. Uh, on this mod, I seem to be able to score, like, 20, 30 points, which I don't know why. <laughs> or maybe I've just got too good at the game that I've, I've stopped really paying that much attention to what the AI do. I'm getting more impressed with how I can perform now. I'm getting better. As the more streams I do, I'm getting better at being able to talk and, uh, like, play the game at the same time. A lot of people, I've seen um, other comments before when I've done like the uh, the Mad Dragon series, the Mad Dragon Six Nations, people said like, um, like, this guy clearly plays the game and then does the audio oh, like secondary and adds it in. Like me doing like the commentary. It's like, no, you could literally, like I'm here, I'm doing it now. <laughs> if, you, if you put a good set of headphones on, you can literally hear my analog sticks clicking because I'm trying hard. <laughs> um... Brian says, uh, we play uh, South Africa 3rd uh, and we have a two-week gap to prepare for Scotland, which should help. Oh, really? Is there a gap? I, I don't know all the um, all the fixtures. I tell you what, uh, I've got to find who, who said they wanted to play a game. Uh, the real Juralumen, uh, if, you, uh, if you let me know when you've got the game booted up and you're ready to play, um, because I'm on a slight delay from the, um, the, the chat anyway, I can have a look. At the, uh, at the World Cup stuff while you're doing that because it gives us something to do. Um, rugby World Cup. I don't know what to look at. Fixtures? Let's have a look. Uh, oh, Christ. <laughs> right. Get, get ready to uh, pay a lot of attention to these. Right? Let, me, let me try and squeeze all these onto uh, to one page at this time. Right, okay. So, because this is one thing I was a little bit worried about, about the Fantasy League, um, was where do I do the videos for the Fantasy League? So there will be gaps, will there? I didn't know that. Uh, because I haven't actually like looked it up that much. So, we have that big game. Ninth, 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 ninth. So we've got four games on the Saturday, three games on the Sunday. Oh, yeah, okay. So then there's 14th, so we've got the Monday... Tuesday and Wednesday with no games. Oh, okay. Um, does it do that every week? 17th, 20th. Yes, it does. Oh, awesome. Right. So that's where I can do my fantasy um, my fantasy videos and stuff. The, uh, the Super Brew. Awesome. I didn't know there was uh, week, week gaps and stuff. That's cool. Because it goes on for a long time, right? Where, where's... Um... Seems... Uh... Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, I'll search for a game in the in the background. To be fair, we might be the only two people, like playing in the whole world. There's actually a likelihood, so it might be the other people. Right, I let that do its thing. Um, Violent play Tonga there. Uh, South Africa play there. No, hang on. Right, I'll just got it for player searching. Uh, Drew Illumin. <laughs> It'll just search forever until uh, until we manage to connect. Um, let me move this. Uh, oh, no, I have to have that there, as I can't show it for you guys. So where do uh, Ireland play South Africa? So Ireland play South Africa there. Uh, and you said, well, Brian, sorry, there's a two-week gap. 
to prepare for Scotland. Um, so you don't play anyone in between that. South Africa do. Wow, that's that's a big positive for them. This will be something to take into account for the uh, if we do the if we do that World Cup stream where we where, where we go through it all. Um, that's a big sort of thing to take into account that some teams will get like gaps, like two week gaps and stuff. This is fun. This is the first ever World Cup um, that we'll be covering on the tour uh, on the channel as well. So I'm going to be learning a lot of stuff, I imagine, along the way. So uh, uh, I've got paired with no one, Drew Lumen. You can. Keep, keep exiting out and just until you find me. <laughs> maybe maybe it won't. Maybe it won't because we're. I'm in the UK. You're in Australia. Maybe it'll find someone else in Australia for you. I'm astonished there's other people playing though. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something to uh, to take into account. Wales have uh, no game between Australia and Georgia as well. Uh, that might be a real bonus for them. Kind of want the gap between. Yeah, I kind of. So they play. Oh, in fact, there's there's a slightly nicer route here. So Wales play Fiji, and then they play Portugal. So you've got to put a first team on for Fiji, right? First team there, B team for Portugal, gives a lot of your first string players a two week break until Australia. I think that's a good move. Um, and then they play no one. And then they play Georgia, as you said. Oh, it's slightly off screen. It's 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 down here. <laughs> uh, and then they play Georgia, like you said, on the on the seventh. Um, so they've got a two week gap. So you can effectively go first team, second team, first team, first team. That's pretty good uh, for the pool stages. Actually, that's a positive for Wales. Uh, so there seems to be a two week gap for most between third and fourth game. That's interesting how that works out. There must be. A reason <laughs> unknown to me. New Zealand have one week, two week. Uh, do they play anything between second and third week? Doesn't look like it. No, so New Zealand have got theirs between second and third week. Again, that's that's decent for them though, isn't it? Like. It's really interesting, actually, to learn a little bit about like the way the way it lines up for these sorts of things. So, New Zealand, France, that's a first team for New Zealand, right? Then they go on to play Namibia. Um, unfortunately, Namibia might have a very long day that day. Uh, so I see New Zealand putting a bit of a B team on for that one. Then they have their two week gap, and then they play Italy. So chuck a first team on for that. Well rested. Um. And then the week after you play Uruguay, man, New Zealand have got a, a fun... <laughs> like, France is tough, but I feel like New Zealand are going to really, really enjoy the uh, their Six Nations. Uh, right, it's looking like I'm going to guess we aren't going to be able to find each other, Juro Lumen. Um, not only have I not found you, I've not found anyone. <laughs> so I'm going to guess... Oh, I found someone! I found someone. It might be Juro Lumen. The name is the real. Hang on. It might be Drew Lumen in the chat. If it is, that's that's awesome. Um, okay, what do we want to do? I need to go in Australia. Ah, oh, we got it. That's amazing. I'm so happy about this. Right. Well, this will probably be our final game to uh, to see off the night, guys. I'm going to stop streaming at ten just because uh, I will probably be annoying all my neighbours by uh, shouting so loud. It's really hard when you've got the headset on. I've no idea how loud I actually talk. <laughs> until I take it off. I have tried to link it up to my mic. Oh, oh die, I didn't realize I have, I have a time limit. Uh, off you gone. I'll go. There you go. We'll be, we'll be the, the same. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do I care about anyone in the team? Not particularly. Uh, oh, we've got a Makaloo, right? Fly half, scrum half, lock, hooker, hooker. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, why not? Done. <laughs> well, there we go. That's super fun to uh, to end off uh, off the night with a with a subscriber game. I'm really happy we got to play one at least. Let's see how laggy this game is. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, Ben Snow. I've uh, completely missed your comment along uh, all this chaos that I've been doing, going backwards and, uh, and forwards. Uh, also, Eddie Jones seems to start well with uh, new teams he coaches. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, he'll be making the most of his uh, of his game with uh, with Australia through this uh, World Cup. Uh, Keen, uh, I'm going to have to go, but uh, have a good night. I've enjoyed uh, being in the stream. Take care, bros. Hey, thank you, Keen. Thank you for uh, for stopping by, mate. Um, I'm so glad you enjoyed your uh, your first entry as well into the uh, into the Super Brew on the channel. Right, focus time. We're playing in Australia, so uh, I should have 12 hours of uh, of lag ahead of me. Yeah, <laughs> so we can put him under pressure. Apparently, I didn't win that ruck. <laughs> This is going to be terrible. <laughs> okay. Okay. The passing seems to be working, right? Get it wide. Back at tower. We scored! Maybe. We'll wait a second to see if we did. Yes, we did! <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be a terrible game. This game is going to end. This game is going to end like 100 to 80 because we're both just going to keep scoring on each other. I can see it going. Right, here he goes. Goes for the deep kick. Now, I'm going to guess the uh, the positive element to this game is don't give possession away like that. Oh, we've managed to steal it back. Okay. Oh, good tackle there on uh, on Villiers. Right. Uh, what's my attack setup? Pretty uh, pretty wide. Oh, Antonio, not managing to <laughs> fit through the gap. <laughs> Probably the wrong player to ask to fit through a gap. To be fair, Antonio, what is he like? Twenty stone. Oh, couldn't get it out. Okay, we all uh, right. Where's all my players? Oh, Valencia. It in the gap as well. Man, my, my team is... Uh, I've got this on the widest setting it can be, and I've stood in giant pods of, like, four-player. Charles Olivon runs for the line. Out to Damien Pernod. We'll run it over. Try number two. <laughs> I feel kind of sorry for Joe Dr Dr Lumen. Joe Lumen's probably still watching the kickoff, like, 12... <laughs> the lag. The lag feels really harsh. It's one of the few things in this game, though, right? Like... Uh, Someone, someone gets the the cut of the grass with the with the way the with the with the lag. It, it favors one person more than the other. It happens to be it's me in this game. Uh, Juro Lumen, oof, struggling with the lag here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, copium, copium. What's he on about? <laughs> no, I could, I can imagine. I've seen a couple of these uh, of these rucks. It looks suspicious. Oh, an improper kickoff. We'll take them. Get ready for a scrum, Juro Lumen. <laughs> They're hard enough as it is. Let's see how it does when we've got huge lag. Find. Now, there is a little bit of a delay between uh, the stream, me saying it. So uh, I'm going to go for something special here. I'm going to go for my number eight to run. Yeah, caught him off guard and Entermax away. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Juro. <laughs> It's going to be one of those games. Uh, I really hope you still got... I mean, to be fair, though, although I am streaming, I am currently streaming while playing this game. I assume Jura Lumen has also got the stream up on his end while he's also playing a game. So we're going to be really struggling as well so you can hear my uh, my commentary and stuff. <laughs> so it's prob we're probably not making it easy on ourselves. Right, he's going for another kickoff here. Here he goes. He's gone for a deep kick. Right, go on. We'll give uh, we'll give the ball back. We'll make it interesting. Entermax kick downfield. Let's give him some possession and see how it works the other way around. My God, look at this ball bouncing. And off the post, right? Oh, he's kicked it. He's kicked it back away. Well, he clearly wants me to have uh, possession. He's going for the Eddie Jones tactic. Kick it, kick it away, and let your defense back you up. <laughs> back at tower, phasing through players. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be a rough one. The question is, my tackles seem, just seem to be missing. Yeah, I know what it's like, Juro Lewin. <laughs> Unfortunately, this could be the rest of the game, mate. <laughs> um, I'm trying to. I, I'll try and kick the ball back to you. I'll let you have a bit of possession. Uh, and I'll see how it copes on my end in terms of the uh, the tackling. It just seems to be that it's favoured me over you. I don't know why. 
Maybe maybe I'm like classed as the host, so you're like playing on my thing. I'll try kicking it away and see uh, see how we get on. If I can score one try, I'll be happy. So my aim is to now keep you from scoring one try. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> see, as the breakaway goes, nearly nearly down the wing. Oh yeah, I can tell the lag there. I I purposefully didn't commit to that ruck, and uh, it went on for a lot longer than uh, you would probably want. <laughs> oh man, this could be. Uh, well, I mean, oh, that's a good tackle. Fair play. That was some good uh, good coverage there. Well, I'm 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 prepping for a box kick, but your guy had it in the back of. The <laughs> Next thing to fix in rugby twenty four, a multiplayer that works. Oh, he's gonna get there. <laughs> It was like he was dancing around no one, and then I couldn't tackle him. <laughs> he did it though. He did. He did his challenge. That's what he wanted to do. I really think whoever has the ball is in is in a good position for this one. <laughs> I don't think uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of scores against the head. I think if you've got the ball in hand, you'll be safe. I kind of like that. Kind of like that camera pan up there on the on the fly half. That's a little bit different to playing on the on single player. Alrighty. Let's put him under pressure. Let's try and put him right on his touchline. Ooh, nearly. <laughs> a little bit too much. Just a little inch too far. He's got an opportunity here, though. Scrum in the midfield. Uh, I can see this being 31 points in 31 minutes, said Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Point per minute. This is how this game is going. Okay. Got the opportunity here. He goes. Oh, okay. My 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 centre just ran out of position for that one apparently. Okay, I thought I had the turnover. Apparently, I did not. <laughs> oh no, the tide is turning. The lag is now against me. <laughs> Maybe it just decides the lag goes against whoever doesn't have the ball. <laughs> Oh man, I really hope they have good multiplayer for Rugby 24 because this is this is rough. Here we go, Villiers picks it along the ground. Can anyone get back to stop him? No. <laughs> One try every seven minutes. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Can we get to 80 points combined by the 80th minute, do we reckon? We're at 40 at 40. We're on for it, Jorah Lumen. We can do it. <laughs> I mean, is it even worth subs? <laughs> unless unless I've got a sub that can somehow fix teleportation and glitching, uh, it's not going to do a lot for me. Right. Oh, he's gone for a uh, cheeky high one there. That's nice. I'm not even allowed to compete for that one, apparently. So there we go. <laughs> positive, uh, positive spin on things. Go, Wilkie outside. Villiers, oh, good tackle on the wing. Five minutes after the tackle happened. Oh, yeah, did it actually get the steal of that line out? Oh, that's a good run. He's uh, made some good ground there. Oh, he, now he's got turned over, and now there's men on the overlap this time. Except my player didn't pick up the ball. <laughs> oh man. You can get good commentary out of this, right? <laughs> you guys enjoying the stream? <laughs> oh, don't give the ball away. Julien Marchand. Out to Villiers. Oh, God, what an awful kick. <laughs> give me a monitor to show where the wind is going. So I don't just blast it into... T I mean, lineouts are impossible, right? Oh, no, apparently I won. <laughs> I didn't even press anything. I just got the ball, apparently. That doesn't seem very fair. Okay, we're slipping behind in points, Joel. I mean, one of us needs to try. Yeah, mixing up the attack plan here. That's the an awful pass that did nothing for me. Come on, boys. Oh, Damien Pinot. Not finding the gap. Oh, he gets the turnover, though. French line 
runs at such awkward shapes. <laughs> oh, I thought I had the ball. <laughs> I'm planning my attack plan. My team was even getting in position. I wonder how set plays work in uh, in a game like this. Should we have a go? Let's see if he's ready for a set play. Let's mix it up. Andrew Gamer says, hi. Hi, Andrew. How are you doing this fantastic evening? Are you enjoying the laggiest multiplayer of rugby you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> oh, Joshua's, uh, Joshua's on a big calls here. Joshua Lumen to win 35 to 33. He predicts a huge turnaround in events. 20 minutes on the clock. Can he do it? I mean, the scrummaging's broken because I can't... <laughs> Whoever scrum it is is just over before it begins. Oh, he's gone left. That is a big call. I'm not sure about that one. Oh, all oh, the kick. All oh, the kick. Oh, Germany. Looking for a uh, bit of a breakaway. Not going to get there. God. France are so deep from each other. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, played the extra man. Up and under. Entomac chasing it on. And catches. Oh, there's got to be room. There's got to be room to the left. A little pop pass. Zero by. Oh, couldn't get there. <laughs> Can't even score a drop goal. It's just too out of the way. Oh, yeah, I held the last defender. Yes, didn't buy it. <laughs> Play with the lag. That's the way to do it. Oh, loose pass. Oh, keep spreading right, guys. Hey, to be fair, the second half's got a little bit better. We've both got a bit more used to the uh, the lag now. So we're actually able to play a little bit better. Oh, DuPont, though. Oh, DuPont of Dami and Pano. Damien Poe just got beaten to that. <laughs> how, how, how did he just get beaten to that? He literally had... What is this? Oh, it's a scrum. <laughs> so I want to clip this and send it to Rugby 22 and be like, this is your game. You made this. Okay, here we go. Aldrit again to take this. Here he goes. Oh, goes over for the try. The number eight from the back of the scrum. They never suspected. <laughs> uh, Josh says, just love the players getting dragged back with the tackle. Yeah. <laughs> they, get, they get over the gain line and then they just get shunted backwards. Okay, 40 points to seven. We're not going to get to 80, Jura Lewin. We're not going to make it. <laughs> but you did get one try, which I'm really glad for you because this is, this is hard. It's hard on my end, let alone what you're in. I think I'm technically like the host. I, I can't imagine what this game looks like for you. <laughs> right, Francois Cross. Let's see if the uh, the flanker can run the length. Oh, what a great cover tackle. Absolutely fantastic. You know what? We're mixing it up. Here we go. Cross field kick. <laughs> Who will win? Charles Olivar, no! <laughs> well, can we sneak down the right-hand side? No. Okay. And again. Doing it again. Here we go. Line depth. Everyone up. Everyone up. Oh, nearly! <laughs> Didn't work. Right, we're now on the defensive. Jura Lewin has got to run the length of the field. Can he make it work? He gets out of his 22. Fair play to him. He's still going. France falling off the tackles, but it turns back over. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I can't even commentate on this game because it's just so it's just so like awkward. The things I'm watching aren't happening. Oh, massive gap in the midfield there. Good tackle, though, by... I don't, I don't even know who that was. Marchand now has it, apparently. Villiers, oh, gets teleported backwards. <laughs> I'll be back out. Gael Ficou. Bit of room to work with now. Marchand, apparently tackled. <laughs> by Nightcrawler from the X-Men. And just get anywhere. Villiers, with his little dancing feet. Oh, a knock-on. Oh, actually, we don't want the... 
Oh, oh apparently he didn't pick up the ball. <laughs> what happened here? How did number four not pick that up? <laughs> he just stared into the space. Well, GG's in the chat for <laughs> the laggiest game. <laughs> Yeah, Ben Snow with the uh, the right attitude there. It's so bad, it's good. <laughs> that's what we uh, that's what we want to see. Um, punted again. Yeah, I, I nearly got the crossfield. I would have been kind of happy if I could have got the crossfield, but uh, that was fun. Yeah, Drew, a good game. That was crazy. That was a uh, certainly an experience. Right, guys. Well, on that very high note to end on. Uh, I'm going to end the stream there, guys. I've been streaming for three hours now. My voice is beginning to go. I'm sure we're beginning to annoy my neighbours with uh, with all my talking. But thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in to the stream, whether you're here in the chat now or you're watching the video back live on YouTube afterwards. Thank you for taking part in the Fantasy League and watching the channel over the course of the Six Nations. I hope you've enjoyed it all, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.